well welcome everybody to the onward vr master league season 12 challenger cup we've finally made it my name is nightfire with two e's i'm joined by my co-caster sky joker sky how are you feeling today oh man i was so excited for this i didn't even go to sleep <laughs> So we're <laughs> we're killing it to this morning night. Uh, yeah, it is going to be an exciting morning here. Bright and early for some of us, but also middle afternoon for some of these EU folks. And so we are going to jump in to our first round of the day. Oh, apologies for the uh, <laughs> as we solve these technical issues here. Uh, apologies there. The technical feature. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, we are. <laughs> going to be hopping in to some interesting action this afternoon i'm very much excited to see what we got for the challenger cup our first game of the day is going to be friendly fire versus animal house animal house being that home team they'll get to start on that uh volk position and map number one going to be suburbia sky please distract these people while i solve these technical issues here <laughs> so looking at our matchup today so so far we do have most of the animal house team in here we're just waiting on one from friendly fire and then we will kick off the action once they finish their strategies starting with suburbia we are doing a predetermined map for this challenger cup which is a little bit different from last year instead of doing bands and going down the list so it'll be interesting to see how teams adapt especially to this new setup having to do they knew what maps they were going to play, but they didn't know yeah. what teams they were going to play. Right. Or no, they didn't, actually. They only just learned the map list. So, yeah, so it'll be... <laughs> everything's kind of thrown at them last second. Yeah, coming into this final like week, I suppose, I'm, I'm sure all of these teams practiced every map, you know, especially strengthening their weak points uh, before they get into this weekend. Because, to your point, they weren't sure where they'd be playing at, on what maps they'd be playing at. And so... If anything, they've done themselves a service, right? Because from here, we have two winners. We have a postseason, we have a group A winner and a group B winner this weekend. Those two teams will then duke out in the best of three next week. The winner of that is our eighth team that moves on to the postseason tournament, the round robin tournament where we take the top seven teams from our regular season ladder and pitch them up against each other at a chance for what is now, I believe, $10,000 in cash and hardware on the prize wow. pool. It is a nice chunk of change to be competing for. And so you can also expect today that these teams to come in here and compete pretty aggressively. It is going to be everything on the line. And one thing I like about the Challenger Cup Sky is just a shift in meta because it's only one map, it's one shot. And really, if you lose one, your odds of being in that top one to two position at the end of the group stage are pretty low. You almost have to be undefeated to really get to the gritty at the end. And yeah. one, like, as you said, once you lose that one map, I mean, it's it's a tough comeback. You could yeah. win every single other one and still no. not come back for the teams that don't lose. Of course, we do have a pretty diverse set of teams playing today. You can see the bracket beneath us here. I, there's I not really... I, there's not going to... There's a chance that we do have everybody losing. You know, everyone loses a game, right? And so it could come down to a bunch of 4-1 ties, uh, if I think, if, I, if my math is correct. Maybe I'm wrong on that. And then it'll be amount of rounds won, and, you know, there's different determinating factors there if we do have a tie in the scoreline. Uh, but going to be very exciting nonetheless. Plenty of games to tune into this afternoon. We have another stream live over on VRML2 if you want to catch that action as well. And so... I think we are just about ready to hop in to our first matchup. We're just waiting for that fifth of Friendly Fire to pop in here, and we will be in to our first map of the afternoon. Uh, quick shout out to everyone that is tuning in here today. If you are dropping by early in the morning, or I suppose uh, right in the afternoon for you fine EU folk, uh, <coughs> we do really appreciate you stopping by and hanging out. And like I said, it's going to be a long day. Sky, I mean, the Challenger Cup historically uh, has gone upwards of like five hours in terms of overall time. Uh, I think ideally we'll be a little bit faster through the maps uh, this go around with this Challenger Cup. But 
we will have to see. Uh, regardless, the point being, strap in for a lot of Onward today. That's 100% the Challenger Cup and even the finals in general are really a testament to not just your Onward capabilities, but also your just persistence in that competitive mindset in general. As you said, five hours of just yeah. du duking it out against the enemy teams. It's, it's not an easy task, especially in VR, doing everything manually, physically. It's tasking. Yeah, it really is. And, uh, <laughs> well, we'll have to see if these teams are up for the task. So far, we're still waiting on a fifth from Friendly Fire. Hopefully it's a not too long of a pause because soon enough they are going to have to start. And, I mean, what a worse way to start your Challenger Cup than to have to go into your first map of the day 4v5. I mean... <laughs> Especially against the likes of a team like Animal House, that is not going to be an easy first map by any stretch of the imagination. And so, uh, yeah, we have about another five minutes before we are going to start this map. And I'm surprised that we don't have all five ready. Because again, Sky, there is something to be earned here. You know, throughout the course of regular season, it's just standard gameplay. But we are now at the point where winning these games, winning the Challenger Cup, will net you a nice chunk of change. Unfortunately, it looks like Friendly Fire only have four. And so we hop into our first round of Animal House versus Friendly Fire in the Challenger Cup Group A with Friendly Fire down 4v5 off the start. Yeah, unfortunate that they're gonna have to go into this Again, like I said, a team like Animal House definitely going to put the pressure on a 4v5 here. Come out down the center. Wicked Hex and Quoka already picking up two. Norse with the great refrag. And Mithlot only down. But Green and Quoka are not going to make that refrag as easy as they wow. blank on Good the pinch. Shit, and Animal Good House shit. take that first round 30 seconds in. Just on defense, no less, guy. So a tough start here for the friendly fire squad but like you said animal house with 30 seconds left take that first round and that is a very fast bulk round <laughs> to say the least not exactly what friendly fire are looking for here to kick things off so you know a bit of a uh, optimal for animal house because like you said they're going to apply the pressure now they know what they're into they know that they have an advantage out the rip and so i think we can expect some pretty good aggression uh especially from animal house on the attack here granted we did see some kills still come through for the likes of friendly fire and so uh, I, I won't count them out all the way you know we do see 4v5s plenty of times in matches uh you know it's a team losing a pick or something like that and those teams are able to come back and so it's not a complete death sentence i, I suppose but still it does make it obviously a bit harder sky <laughs> and animal house is definitely they're gonna put up that fight, and with winning that first round right off the bat, Friendly Fire is gonna have to really think about how they're gonna play this if they can't get that fifth in here. Yeah. Yep, they are indeed. They are trying to take, I think, <clears throat> it still seems like they're taking their time between these rounds, hoping that they can get their fifth in. But uh, regardless, we're playing another round 4v5. And I suppose, Sky, worst case, we get done with this map quick and can move on to another map that's getting active or actively played, uh, which is something we will be doing throughout the course of today. We'll be popping around to different games, but we're not there yet. And again, Friendly Fire still have an opportunity here to try and battle back Animal House as they go into the 4v5 for round number two on Suburban. The trick is here, they're going to have to keep away from the peaks and not let themselves get picked off early on as they attempt to even things out. I don't know if you saw that. Miss a lot of prones across that corner to avoid the line of sight there from Mobstar, but also still set up onto the deep angle to cover the APC corner. Wicked Hex is going to be making that move soon, and 
Unfortunately, it seems Missalot made some audio noise up there and Green Theft heard it. Ooh. Better than you. <laughs> nice pickup, gonna put things into the 4v4. Green a little disjointed. <laughs> Friendly Fire making a lot of noise, yeah, interestingly back. enough. Not afraid of being heard. Cam Street picking up Berta, making an aggressive swing. Mobstar now gonna try and gain middle house control. We Finds lost, one lost, uh... right on the porch. Okay. Okay. I don't think I got him confirmed. Oh, yeah, the Mobstar down. keeps doing work down the center. Right, we need to start looking at center house. Bit of fire yeah. coming in from that top floor to get the kills around Mobstar, but it does turn it into a 2v2 at the end of the day, and Friendly Fire have managed to even things up a bit here off of round number two. Hex still available for a res, but I don't think Mobstar is going to rotate around for that, and Lipinski yeah, is still trying to set up into a position where they will have an angle into those windows on that second floor that's i think the plan but if it isn't they're a bit disconnected from mobstar who is applying pressure already onto those two in that building mobstar has them pretty locked down if lipinski could make a really wide swing he's not going to mobstar finds cam street he's gonna gain middle house control goes for miss lot what runs out of ammo oh, runs out of ammo Oh, man. Wow. Missalot took two bullets into the back and survives with the clip running out of ammo. Lipinski still left alive here as we are into a 1v1. What a crazy inside battle there. Now they'll hear Lipinski push inside, but now the question is which way do they come from? Do they come from that stairwell side or to the right where they don't seem to be holding that angle Lipinski seems to be onto something here especially if they approach from that outside they may be able to catch Mislod in the corner through that doorway yeah but do you expect somebody in that corner not really no you can see Lipinski's dialed into the second floor here Oh, yeah, no way he checks that lamp. Such oh. an and a, oh, but he does through the handles of that bench. Oh, man, Wicked just sitting over there yeah. telling his team what to do and where to aim. I wonder if Wicked saw the rotation to the bottom floor. You know, I wonder if he saw something through the windows or through the door and saw that rotation through the bottom floor and then directed Lipinski. Except the end of that kill, Lipinski said good call out. So potentially, uh, like you said, guiding them right to that kill. But either way, friendly fire battle back on round two and nearly take that round to tie things up. It's unfortunately goes in the way of Analyze or Fortunate, depending on who you're rooting for. And they now have a 2 0 lead. We move over to that red car objective and. This one's a tough one to attack, so I think if anything, it'll come down to 3-0 and Friendly Fire could potentially grab their defensive round then. Right. Well, we'll have to see what their attack looks like on this OBJ. They put out some good smokes, their last Marsock offense, uh, offensive, maybe they'll put out some good smokes here that can do you a wonder. Uh, <laughs> they really can if you can smoke out the proper lane to get up to that objective. It is relatively capable, but again, it's getting to that car that is the real challenge with how a standard defense will set up. But we'll see what Animal House put up there on that Volk side as we dive back to it. Round number three on Suburbia. Okay. Nice. It's gonna be a real tough one. It's gonna be all about whether or not can Friendly Fire get the peaks necessary to pick out a couple defenders yeah. from the Next center. Season. Get and then can they get the smokes where they need to in order to Just cross some, uh, preferably uh, on a some, on an objective like this maybe lane one will be a final cross point but animal house is going to fully commit to the other side of the street yeah wow all five have crossed this street and are set up for i guess what you could consider aggressive lines of sight but at the same time, Friendly Fire playing a very passive offense right now 
almost like they're defending that back objective. Uh, waiting for Animal House to push the aggression, and I really like this adjustment from Friendly Fire. They're really trying to play into the hand of Animal House's pace, which has been fight in the first 45 seconds. They're changing that by really not even allowing the fight, and we'll have to see if it pays off, because you do have people setting up into positions like Quoka Floka up onto that ladder, up onto this, uh, excuse me, the, the uh, slide. Had a great line down in, but they're actually going to miss Cam Street crossing, and now Missilot's there. Doesn't seem to take those shots at the APC, although there goes the kill down. Another one Going right on to Airborne, now. and just like that, they punch two tickets in a matter of seconds. Now it's up to Cam Street and Norse. So there's kind of the problem of sitting back and waiting as an, an attempt to counter aggression. You give the opportunity for people like Foka to get into these positions. If you don't grab control of those early lines, they're gonna use them against you. And Quoka just doing work from that parking, the or through the parking lot from the uh, no, playground. They get that res and the duo's up on the APC, but Animal House is five strong and Quoka is a push element that the, for the animal house defense is really on the hunt for kills right now if cam street's not careful boca will have a good line over the top of that fence down into the street and so we'll have to see how cam street and airborne want to push out from this apc corner with yeah, again five alive for animal house About to say, have they even identified that cloak wow. is there? Oh, but judging by go. both of those crosses, they did not. Was that hey. all five for Quoka? Uh, no. No, there was one. Well, actually, well, oh, they got the res. Was, was down by Wicked, but the res came yeah. through, so I think that was an ace. <laughs> I think it was. Wow. The aggression from Quoka dominates round three and Animal House advanced 3-0. And I, I, I like the shift from Friendly Fire, I do. Um, I don't know if it was too long or, or what, but to your point, if you're gonna play passive like that, then moving forward, you have to be ready for the rest of that offense, that defense to have pushed forward looking for you, you know? And Quoka being that prime example had pushed forward and was looking. Uh, when you're up 2-0, you can afford to lose one in a scouting mission, especially when you're starting 4v5. So, <laughs> a, uh, a solid job regardless uh, from Animal House there, Koka in particular. And uh, again, I like Friendly Fire trying to change it up, but just not quite enough to get them back in it here for map number one. And again, an unfortunate reality that they have started their really last chance to get into the uh, postseason tournament 4v5. You know, it's uh, unfortunate, but here it is. Animal House a round away from taking their first map, however, and I'm sure they couldn't be happier as they are like playing the pretty guy, good to kick things off here for the Challenger Cup Group A. I wonder if they're going to go for a cap, too, to maximize or try to go for the cap, sky because that's going to maximize the amount of points you get. And again, in the case we have that tie, rounds one matters. Up lane one before. Yeah, that's how, as you mentioned before, the kind of shift in meta where the cap becomes a bit more powerful than it would in a normal match. As you're fighting for these points early on. A lot of smokes. Airborne, unfortunately, missing those shots onto Wicked. Gonna open up a great opportunity for that cap potential. But Wicked oh, goes down to a nice grenade up the center. Just like that, two and a half are shut down. The smokes are here and they're ticking away. They're not gonna have the option to push that objective soon enough. Cam Street has, meanwhile, pushed forward into a very aggressive position and will catch Wicked Hex trying to push out from that lane. 
It leaves us with the duo now left alive. And again, the smoke sticking away. Those aren't going to be there any longer. Never mind. As Quoka catches one. Ooh, Airborne goes down on the back as Lipinski covers the flank. The aggression from Friendly Fire ends up costing them lives. Cam Street's going to try their hand. Had a bit of aggression as, as well up next. And they may actually be able to find the duo here if they're not careful. Lipinski. Oh. They get hit from the side. They do. Quoka with a quick refrag keeps it 1v1. Wah! There's wow. the kill. And Quoka locking in three more in the final what round. A solid duo setup. They had the rear security. Yep. They had yeah. the push. They were on yeah. time with each other. They weren't communicating as much as you might expect, but they were definitely bouncing off of each other very well, almost like they didn't really need that communication. Yep. Obviously, again, Fortune. a good start for the likes of Animal House. They come out here playing well and, like you said, locked in and coordinated out the gate. So, if anything, a good warm-up round for them as they now have to go and prepare themselves for map number two. It, I wonder if they know the maps. Uh, I don't know if they do, uh, if they know the whole set of maps here this afternoon. Regardless, uh, they'll want to stay loose and ready for more action. You can see a few more games are already finishing up. Legacy has taken a W. Ariel has also taken a win. And so we'll have to see where things lie in the next in a few more rounds. But for now, we are still in the early stages of Group A. We are going to cut to a brief intermission and try and pop into another game. So do not go anywhere. We may come right back for more action into Suburbia. If not, we'll be back for round number two. So regardless, more onward action. While we're in this break, you can also pop over to VRML2 and catch more games being cast by Jamie and Nomad your two favorite new additions to the casting squad. Again, we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back with VRML Challenger Cup Group A.
Welcome back, everybody. We are here and ready and waiting for a map number one still as we play out uh, the what could be final round for Kai versus Gladiator. We managed to just jump in to the action here. Like I said, we'll be popping around to games and getting into them mid-game once we've completed our, the series that we tune into from the start. Uh, in this case, it is going to be a 3-0 advantage uh, for Kai right now. They'll be going on defense for our next round, and so about we'll to see if Gladiators can bounce back. Looking at the KD feed, it looks like Gladiators have picked up a couple of kills. And so they've been in the fight, so to speak, against Kai here for these first few rounds. But you go back into the action, Joker, for round number... Let's take a guess and say four. I don't think there's been a cap yet. Round four. Free <laughs> mm. fire coming in. Gladiator's not playing it slow here as they fly out of the gate. Getting aggressive up through the center costs them two. Petrolman finds Semper on the edge, but it's a quick 3v4 as Kai play an aggressive defense on what is normally a pretty passive objective. Kai definitely did not want to let them have any middle house control. Yeah. Up down that center. Ooh, that's a good nade. Bobby still survives, though. Puts a few more suppressive rounds through the bush. Nearly gets tagged themselves there, and Smithy tries their hand at shooting rounds up through the center. And now Marco is pushing in through the middle. Seems to, have, seems to have been identified as Dazzler is locked into the doorway. Look at all of these angles. Marco is in the pocket right now of safety, but not for long as Dazzler oh, catches wow. the door. Well, oh, was in a pretty decent position to sneak his way around the action, but he gave himself away with a pre-fire. And Engage is going to be holding that line. Going to be very difficult to deal with. They are splitting attention nicely as Bobby applies pressure from the APC. And get, uh, Petrol is pushing from that playground side. And is dividing their attention enough for Bobby to work their way over to the other side of the street. Edge sees them. Dazzle sees them. A lot of rounds coming. Bobby oh. catches Dazzle over the top. Edge finds a quick kill onto Petrol and is now tucked in behind solid cover. Engage doesn't have a line. Edge pops up oh. for a quick bit of peekaboo and finds the final kill to lock Kai in. Their map win 4-0. to zero. That little game of whack-a-mole. Back and <laughs> forth. Up and down. Left and right. Jeez. Uh, well, we caught one. <laughs> Kai taking <laughs> the first map 4 0. A couple of 4 0s coming through here on the old uh, feed there. As you can see, more games finishing up. That means that we have less games to tune into. So the chances are that we will see you for map number two. We'll try to jump into another game, maybe catch another last round. But otherwise, again, we'll be right back for more VRL and ML action as we hunt for another game. Don't go anywhere. Challenger Cup Group A coming at you.
welcome back everybody thank you for patiently waiting for us to get back into the action here for group a i know we did have some uh pause there between the games but that'll happen from time to time in the challenger cup hopefully when we do have those pauses, we'll be able to jump into another game but either way we are here and we are waiting for our uh next matchup of the afternoon mm -hmm. imperial versus kai the second map of the day is going to be bizarre and sky i'm curious what you think of where we're going here for our first our, our next map with kai and imperial in particular imperial being a new squad yeah, I'm pulling up the stats for Imperial right now, looking at this kind of throw together team. He did say his new one. Checking out for stats. Yeah, not much to go on here. They do have a 100% win on the only time they've played quarantine as a team. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's really a toss up here. Kai being a you know, well-pronounced team. They've been together for a while. A couple of them coming from some other teams, a little bit from Water, I believe, an old old name. So, master level versus what's come together, kind of a thrown together. We'll just have to see where things take us. On a map like Quarantine, it really could go any which way, considering there's, what, 12 objectives that could possibly come up. Yeah. Oh, I had I put bizarre. Uh, I, I, I forgot that it, we are going to quarantine for our second map here uh, of the afternoon. And yeah, it is a real shift in pace from suburbia, where we got r down to the action within the first thirty seconds. We now go to quarantine, where the range, yeah, certainly opens up a bit. And like you said, variety is here to stay. I do apologize. <laughs> for the tech issues that you've been seeing here today it's a little early <laughs> it is a little early we'll have it all sorted uh i figure i think i've figured out all the buttons now for the postseason uh mm -hmm. but again i do apologize for that we're all good though it's all good no worries we're into the action for round number one of our second map of this challenger cup and again it's kai on the attack and imperial on the defense out the gate, Kai's wow. gonna find Upstairs. some kills. Semper and Impact. most they have up there. Dazzler taking shots and finding that kill. He's behind the half wall. Dazzler sounding like he's on the other gone. side of his house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what Daz just called second floor. Just yelling those call outs, making sure everybody him, hears them. Maybe no. Doesn't In matter what time it is morning. for them. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> This being an NA team like us. Yeah, no kidding. But uh, hey, you know, they're obviously uh, locked in and comms is one of the most important elements in these uh, top tier teams. And oh, wow. That's fine. Nice. That kill. And again, right off of the comms, I believe, of Engage saying one in first floor hop hospital. Edge pops up and finds that kill as soon as they get up onto those stairs. Kai now up 5v3 on the attack. Uh, they took their uh, Suburbia around 4-0, but so did Imperial. So both of these teams obviously playing good to start this Challenger Cup, and it's really now a matter of can they, who's, which team's going to keep the momentum going? Are we going to be into a bit of a back and forth, or are I going to continue to run with the momentum from that first map as well? Either way, we're into a bit of a holding pattern here as the rest of this defense is spread out, and the offense is really not focused here up in the north they're pushing in from the south and so they have a ways to go before they get up here onto this objective uh, they are splitting a bit you do see semper rotating in and catching a kill onto oh. tippic there on this north side and so it actually does open up a north entry that they are going to have to worry about semper can get control of this rooftop position and have a great line down into the objective hole there onto scx but also over on a nope not mikey on that stairwell and so it's a very dangerous spot to lose control of for the imperial defense 
going to be a matter of do they go uh, for the cap or do they go for these kills? And have they identified where the last two defenders are? I believe they have a good idea about center burning. But they are not holding any lines onto it. It looks like they're going to try and go around it. And if they just deal with the man on objective, it's a clear cap. They can just leave center burning alive, but it looks like, nope, not Mikey, is still in the fight. And something to note, this might be Imperial's first game, actually, because I believe their first team didn't show up. Uh, so they might not be warmed up. Interesting. Well, oh, if that's the case, down. they are doing okay. They found at least one, but again, it's now 4v1 on right, the attack. Right. SCX is going to be surrounded. And we talk a lot about the shift in meta in the Challenger Cup and a bit of a heavier focus into trying to get these caps. I have to imagine that Kai has an accurate kill count now. Ooh. They still did go for those shots on SCX, but it, they have to have an accurate kill count and then know there's only one on the objective here. And I wonder if they are going to go for a cap attempt. Dazzler is known for his capping, so if he's going to position for it, now's the time. Two minutes on the clock. He clicks! His gun goes for the click, but he goes for the kill. And he finds it, the final one, to bring them up one point on Imperial on this map number two out of five for the Challenger Cup. Like I said earlier, we got a lot of action ahead of us this afternoon, uh, this fine morning for Onward as we are <laughs> into that uh, second round action and it looks like we are also having uh you can see there a few other teams i'm assuming forfeiting their second map maybe after losing the first yep. one just not even deciding to play out the rest of the uh the challenger cup and so that's going to be two wins already locked in for those two respective teams um i don't know how much that will matter because i believe the losing teams go up against the losing teams and so I guess I, th those teams will be 1-1, one, one, but again, the focus tends to be on the undefeated, right, Sky? I mean, that's what it comes down to when you get into that fifth round. If you can remain undefeated through five, you are, well, the best, you have the best chance of taking the group stage. And so I wonder if it's guaranteed. Can two, I wonder if because we have enough depending on the amount of teams, if there can be two teams that have won five maps. I don't know. I don't know the logist, the- That's the, too much math I know. <laughs> before noon. <laughs> yeah, I hear you on that one. Um, Has the sun even come up for you yet? No, it's still dark out here. On your end? Six <laughs> o'clock. I at least up. have sun. <laughs> But I also have, I also can't really, I have my windows blacked out too. So it, it, <laughs> the sun oh, ain't yeah. getting in here regardless, okay? <laughs> Back into the action we go, round number two. On map number two, group A here for the postseason of season 12. For those that maybe aren't in the know, the winner of group A and the winner of group B face off next week. That winner moves on to the round robin to face off against the top seven teams in regular season. For a chance at 10k, surprising oh. a good nade almost gets a double, but doesn't. And on the other side, Lol 926 uh, no, no. catches a kill. Quick refrag there from Semper, keeping the things even for a piece. And Semper's going to continue to apply pressure here, but a bit too much. Going to cost them their life on the corner. Kai into a quick 3v4. Imperial off to a great start. Lol should be able to rotate around and get the res. A nice frag there from Smithy up over the top. Kai is not letting off the gas on defense, although they're going to have to because Phantom's here. Oh, and they catch the back of Smithy. Imperial with three soon to be four left alive. If Law gets the res on the Tippic, will be a four v two if they push into the objective. Wait, Tippic, did you get the gun? I had a lot of confidence there. Once they had the spawn identified, they thought they could push that aggressive stance, but unfortunately, they just made a couple too many crosses and got punished for it. Smithy getting caught in the back as he rotated around or attempted to rotate. Now all the smoke has him a little bit jumpy, but Etch finds Nope 
on the long angle, but quickly getting flanked from the side. It's going to come down to whether or not Engage can shut down the front rotation onto the objective. Oh, he's going to get caught out. A big kill. Etch is the only one to defend, and they don't catch Lol on the drop down. Imperial tie things up here. Wow. And we are even Steven on map two. A solid attack there, Sky. Yeah, those early picks really playing into the hand of Imperial Kai suddenly found themselves in really poor positions without their fellow defenders to back them up. Now we're moving on to one of the newer objectives Oof. far south. This one's always interesting to watch how it plays out because of how open it is and how much the defenders have to actually push out and look backwards mm -hmm. in some cases. It is a objective that can reward patience on the offense. If you do invest in a far rotation around that east side, you can potentially get behind the defense. But to your point, it is important to watch behind you on defense here. And so I imagine that Imperial and Kai will set up the appropriate defensive measures to guard from that. Now, whether that's sitting up in the two-story and watching the street cross or investing one and defending that south hill, uh, there are options that I have seen work well in preventing attacks from the east. And it's really the rock, paper, scissors of onward. Are they going to throw smokes to cross the street? Is anyone watching the street? If they aren't, it's a waste of smoke. If they are, it's a good investment. You know, it's, it's a constant debate. Do I want to give away my position with the smoke in order to deny the... You know, it's... It really is the the, the, the wonderful nature uh, of the competitive game of Onward, and that's why I like to see... That's why I love to cast so much, because you really just get so much variety. It's very rarely the same thing uh, every time. And, well, it's never <laughs> the same thing it's every time. more than point and shoot. There's yeah. so much mind games to be played. There really is, and I mean, we haven't talked about it much at all yet today, Sky, but I imagine we will more as we get into the back half of this Challenger Cup, but the pressure that these teams got to be feeling as well is something that they have to battle with. This is the end of their season, <laughs> if they lose. Phantom gets a call out for the East spawn. Looks like a drone goes down, gonna deny that potential intel for Kai. However, they are now well aware of Phantom's position. They're just going to wait for him to come around that corner. You see three lines, four lines, all trained in on that corner. Post office. They do not want to allow Phantom to push out to the rock and have a more advantageous defensive position, especially since Dazzler has managed to cross the street. Uh, undetected, no less. Not an easy thing to do. Although I do believe Phantom called out they're going to be pushing from the dunes. So you can see both Phantom and SCX in the back corner here are watching that back dune. Also, nope, not Mikey taking a gander through the window from time to time to check that backside as well. There's plenty of vision onto a big open hill that Kai would have to push down if they wanted to push from there. So it's not exactly a great attack spot to come down from, but you can pop your head up over the edge and look for kills. Oh. There is Nope Not Mikey, who's readjusted their position and is now covering the east street, but for how long? Because there's another there. He is confirmed. First shots, Phantom about to get flanked on the back end from Dazzler, as we were talking about before, but he just crosses under his line. Will Dazzler be aware that Phantom could make that cross? Does he know his team backed off the angle? So timely because to your point, Phantom shouldn't have been able to push out there. Yeah, Dazzler probably assumes that whole area is clear, but he might just check it just for safekeeping. Little Bring stairs, snow. watch it. Oh, a flashbang over. Great flash, great Gonna, flash. Oh yeah. Good flash and push. Revive and without comes any in. backup. That was a key pickup yeah. taking out Dazzler over in the corner. That's going to box in the rest of the attack. So unless they go for some pretty major flanks, 
They're gonna be all in one little corner. This, this one over east attack east. from Kai has really fallen apart. Uh, they just haven't seemed to be able to figure out a way to react to Phantom's position, and they lost one on the cross on the east. They're getting suppressed again. Phantom is here looking for kills oh. on the corner, and Kai... They're just barely missing these rotations and these moves from Imperial that are ultimately netting Imperial some big kills. We do have to keep an eye on Smithy. Because is there yeah, a route just for a, over there. a sneak cap here? There is. There 100% is. It's all going to count on SCX in the back over there peeking, but he just got caught out by Smithy. Yeah. If he makes another peek while Smithy's trained in, it's over for him, and then it's going to be all up to Nope Not Mikey to react onto it. Oh, I like Smithy's move here. They're going to get up against the wall and deny vision from the two-story. Well, but you story. see Tippic around the back. Oh, oh there they just are. just in time. A great rotation. Going to shut down the center push. Good coverage from Imperial. Still five up against Kai's two with just under two minutes left. It looks like Etch is going to opt for that long rotation we brought up before. It's really going to be the only way to divide the attention of a full defense. Have to see if they can get across and get any control in the north. But yeah, it is going to be a bit of a road here for the likes of Etch and the Kai squad. 90 seconds on the clock. Does he uh, have time to even do this? So far away. Oh. Phantom Operator really ate them up. I think Nope Not Mikey took fall damage. What are you, what are you trying time. to do? Down themselves. <laughs> Fortunate. I'm so Engage going to try the Dazzler approach. 60 seconds coming up. Etch going for the far west. They're gonna they're gonna try a quick pinch, but Etch is gonna have to come fly and engage a little ahead of him. Ditches their uh, sniper and engage goes with a little bit more close quarters combat, looting the weapon of their teammate. And they should be able to Phantom. catch Phantom pretty easily here. Yeah, nope, not Mikey definitely also. kind of hold off this angle. If he's quick enough, he could get three. Yeah. Here goes Phantom. Find one. Ducks down just in time, looking for another, but they just had that whole hill covered. Now Etch, way too far behind. Again, that long rotation, just a little too long with only 10 seconds. He's not going to get there. Wall is going to hold them up too, and that's just losing track of time. It'll tick away, and Imperial yeah. will lock in their defensive W off the time. A solid 2-1 lead against Kai here. That was a, that was a yeah, that was a nice defensive setup there. It's, like, it's precisely what they needed to cover and at the right times. Yeah, and unfortunate Phantom, or fortunate for them, getting across that. All three lasers dropping off that angle to look to other places. Yeah. Not allowing Dazzler to have any support. Solid job there, and obviously an important uh, hold there from Phantom Operator with that flash, like you said, but then just being down in that corner. They ended up drawing a lot of attention and really... And time. Yeah, they... So much time spent worrying about him. They paused that east rotation. It allowed for the defense to get up onto that two-story and look down across the street and then deny anybody else crossing it. And so... Maybe a... a, a more aggression could have worked out, but, a, but even... The, but, you know, that's us. Fifth, uh, hindsight and also having a top-down view, oh. you know? <laughs> that that call is a lot harder to make, again, when the pressure is on, and maybe you're not necessarily uh, wanting to get too aggressive on your second map. We'll 
see how Kai moves on their defensive round for this objective. We'll see if they reinforce the same positions that Imperial did or maybe take a different approach. I did see some meta spots coming in from Imperial. See how Kai takes it. They're meta for a reason because they work. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they do. As Looks like going. we had a mirrored spawn. Yeah, but a very different approach coming in from Imperial. They're going to opt for a bit more of a spread and try and hit it from all angles. How well that'll work, though, because the East is covered and those shots actually don't connect on the cross, so they are able to get one across the street in the East. Dazzler sees it. It's going to come down to Semper to deter that rotation from no not Mikey, will they see it? Oh, they do not get caught by those shots, and now they know that there's one to their right. So they will be able to peek out this two-story. No, not Mikey, interestingly enough, applies pressure. Semper oh. catches one in the distance and is still getting pushed by Mikey as they go up the stairs. Mikey does not find an opponent where they think they will, and they quickly back off. Looks for more up onto that third story, and Semper is actually the one. Yeah, uh, excuse me, I see uh, SCX finds that kill, and Mikey confirms it. A quick res, and Imperial have swapped this thing around into a 4v3. In a quick couple of seconds. Okay, Tipper, could you clear AC? Very interesting how loosely Kai is playing this. Their defense just all over the place. Etch all the way in the crash building. You wow. saw R Semper pushing way out to that three-story skeleton building. Or two two-story. It's just it's crazy how far they're willing to push out away from the objective in order to try and get some of these picks. And now down to a three and a half. Engage in a great spot for some callouts, but it might be more opportune for them to go for that revive. Etch might find some kills here, but it is such a big risk where if they lose... It's you know, all timing. He has yeah. to look in the right spots at just the right moment, like Phantom Operator out in the open in that street. He has to peek it right at the moment that Phantom goes for a cross. And if he doesn't, he's just going to completely miss him. They've already and missed. And the Tippic's already circumvented. <laughs> yeah, yeah Tippic is almost around them entirely. So they'll be able, if anything, to push in from the objective side. And Etch is not going to look behind them. Well, or will they? Might. He might <laughs> just peek this. Oh, uh, he definitely hears Tippic talking. And he does find the kill. Tippic, the one not to look behind him. And now it's going to come down to maybe Dazzler as the next point of contact here. The rest of Imperial. And a great spot to across. Yeah, over on this side here, and so I'll have to see if Dazzler does catch out anyone crossing the east. They've missed one, and so that one could become a threat on that hilltop soon enough. They really only have, who is it, Smithy over by that objective side. If Smithy goes down, there is a potential to push down that hill up to objective. Because again, Etch is super far away. And so, oh, it's so risky. Down, There's a kill. Down. So I guess it pays oh, off. They catch Phantom. Phantom trying to push around. I don't know what to do Mithy here. is peeking around these boxes occasionally, but he's not peeking the entire hill. He's making right. sure he's staying well covered from the top of the hill. Uh, so if Nope Not Mikey goes wide enough, he could get around the back of Smithy. But I don't think he'll find the kill. Because again, Smithy is well covered and making sure the boxes stay behind him. We wait. See what this push and what the timing looks like here from this duo. If they manage to sync up on their efforts. If Mikey stays quiet and if Etch rotates. Those are the big questions here in this back last minute and a half. Mikey does come alive as they take shots out onto Smithy, but they don't connect. And now 
obviously a bit concerned about several different potential positions they could be shot from. There's a quite a few of them. Smokes do come out to objective though, and Mikey really does have to get rid of Smithy first as Dazzler Ooh. takes out SCX on the other side. Smithy does go down. Mikey has oh. an opportunity to push up to the objective. There's smokes out, and Dazzler has to rotate. Where is uh, Etch in all of this? The crash the objective. No, Etch still was up. still hanging around the crash. He's made it to burning, but he's still on a pretty slow rotation considering how late round this is. But he's taking it carefully. Nope, not Mikey. Might peak this just in time. Running. Yeah, saw the cross. Can I make it? Can I make it? They're going to push up. They're going to go straight for the objective under the nose of Dazzler. Not going to be cap. easy. He doesn't know he's alone. He w the whole time he was talking to somebody, yeah. I believe, or at least attempting comms. Or just talking to their self for a little self-motivation. <laughs> That's entirely possible, too, as Kai bring it up 2-2 on what was looking like a good Imperial attack. Yeah, it was. It was a nice setup, but the... Final hold pays off in Etch's position, albeit risky, does get them a couple of kills. And a couple of key ones at that, shutting down Tippic on that rotation across the west, and another kill right up through the middle. And so they really did ultimately a nice job of defending. Sometimes the risk nets you a reward. It's just, it can also net you a complete loss where if those shots didn't connect, for example, uh, they could have capped on the objective. That objective provides a bit of cover. And so they were, I think, trying to get up to the objective, use it as a bit of cover, and then punch in the code. That can take four seconds, three seconds. And so danger close for Kai on defense there. You know, Imperial could have locked in this map right there with a cap. It's, it's again, why the caps are so vital in this Challenger Cup, because they just... The reward is so great because it's only one map and winning is everything in this uh, Challenger Cup format. And as we do after each every other round, moving on to the next objective here, going in now to the far north next to the down semi truck, another out in the open objective with a couple bits of cover next to it a tough one to cap on but yeah. also a tough one to defend again you have to take these awkward positions that have to look both backwards one. and forwards in some cases oh i'm glad we tuned into this one sky because i'm looking at the feed for round two on wins and losses so far and i'm seeing a lot of four o's surprisingly on quarantine of all things Okay, go for the thingy. Quite a bit of forfeits, I noticed in the chat, so that uh. could be part of it. Just teams not keeping okay. their hearts in it. Tippic getting some early aggression over in the west. Yeah, those shots coming out early. Dazzler and Etch. Advancing quickly over onto this west side. Did they get that west spawn? I didn't even see where they spawned in. See anything? No. Maybe it was yeah, south. They spawned, uh, no, they spawned south, more yeah. towards hospital. Yeah, you're right. And regardless, they, out there. Yeah, they do get a nice spread and are fully oh. surrounding as Smithy does connect with one over on the opposite side of the map, shutting down what was a pretty aggressive rotation phantom operator out in the open there we're gonna have to keep our attention split as we pop back over to the other side because dazzler and etch are pushing close up to tippic's defensive position but i wonder if tippic is hearing any of this because they're actually pushed pretty far away from the likes of dazzler and etch yeah sound works interestingly in this game so it's a wonder I don't think Tippick's aware of this push. However, he does know the potential for it. This is an interesting hold point, though, as it's this isn't a very common door that they would take. 
I gotta wonder if he's solely basing his next move on audio. Oh, there's the move. They get up into that stairwell there. Dazzler and Hatch hear that, and now everybody knows where everybody is. <laughs> Tippett hearing these comms yep, yep, and yep, taking yep, pre-fire yep. shots. Going to give away their position inside. Going to come down to a quick battle in the hallways here. And Tippett likely floor. to trade down, but maybe they can find a kill over the top there on Dazzler. We have shots again from the other side as Smithy crosses out. And the push is coming in also from up through the center. And so Tippett getting, getting pressured from a couple of different angles as they try and get the nades oh. through Etch finds that kill off of that kill semper is able to work their way up to the other side of the north rooftop and kai is uh, encircling this objective nicely it's just a matter of how they're going to push up and if they will go for that cap it's going to be very hard to get still because they do have the defenders focused around that objective space nope not mikey scx both with good angles. Lol right here, but are they going to know that Semper is there as they drop back into the corner? Almost a team kill, but Semper does find the, the shots after getting shot in the back themselves. Good bit of focus there. And All of themselves. these panicked rotations. Yeah. Minus one. I just eating them up as the defense has to quickly rush in to try and cover all these falling angles. Now down to just SCX with a couple callouts from Nope Not Mikey. Yeah, SCX. They should have a good kill count. Yeah, it's a big risk to go for the res, and I think they're aware of that. And so SCX is relying on Mikey to put callouts out. And so if they can confirm Mikey, SCX will be forced to rotate up to that objective. Um, but I don't think they can get a line there because I believe Mikey is down just behind the wall there. And so, yeah, no one actually going to be able to find the angle they want. Oh, except for Smithy, who oh. trades down in a long-range fight in the open. And Kai take their Marsa ground and take the lead for, I think, the first time this map as they go up 3-2. I believe Kai took the first round. Did they? Um, and then Imperial. Oh, you're right. Yes. Because um, Imperial needed a round to warm up. But they came back fighting. As we move on to the next round, what could potentially be the final round, Kai on the defense. Let's see if they go for the same risky plays that they have been. Yeah. And how far they opt to push up. They, I think they felt really confident in the early rounds. Maybe now they're like, okay, this is a fight. Maybe we should stick to our guts <laughs> and condense a little bit. Yeah. We'll, we'll see them. I think, yeah, we'll have to see. And you can, uh, not to, to draw the attention away from the topic here, but again, just to take a look at the brackets. Uh, we are, I think, one of the final games here of this uh, second map as the rest of these matches close out and uh it'll be interesting to see how this uh impacts our round three where we go from there we'll try and keep our focus here on obviously the teams that are winning uh as we will then eventually be crowning a champion after five maps played so as a reminder there are plenty of maps left ahead but i don't think we'll be bouncing around to any other games for quarantine on this channel and so well back to it oh at the false start there uh a quick shout out to HyperX. you may have seen it on uh your screen here the loot drop 2 sale is live now for a month long you can get yourself up to 50 percent off on a variety of HyperX products I would encourage you to go click the link uh, on the, the click the HyperX banner that is beneath the stream. If you don't full screen the stream and you click that HyperX banner, that'll direct you to the sale that is live now. And so I do recommend you check that out because HyperX is one of our sponsors and they offer great products like the HyperX Quadcast X and the HyperX Cloud 2 headphones, amongst a variety of other products such as Bluetooth and wireless in-ear uh, earbuds that can connect to your Quest or Quest 2. 
They, uh, easy to recommend. Also, with their keyboards, their mouse, uh, we got it all over here. And, uh, I, I always do like to shout out HyperX because they have uh, mm -hmm. good, solid products, and we really do appreciate their sponsorship. So do check out uh, that Loot Drop sale if you're thinking about picking yourself up uh, some HyperX products. Um, also, a few of our other sponsors include ProTube VR, a uh, sponsor for the entirety of the VRML, and one that I love to promote is they have fantastic stocks that help stabilize your aim in-game. If you want to become a better sniper in a game like Onward, a ProTube stock is going to do you wonders. Essentially, a real-life stock that you put your controllers into cups, and that connects to a, a, uh, a, a stock that, that, that connect, uh, goes up against your shoulder, and you can really stabilize your aim uh, to a point that you just can't uh, necessarily freehanding. Um, they also have a variety of other products, such as force feedback mounts, where if you really want to actually feel the recoil of the gun you're shooting to enhance your immersion, uh, you can, amongst a variety of other mount products, like I believe also a, a force feedback pistol uh, mount, if you're into uh, uh, single-handed pistol shooting games uh, in VR. Again, a lot of different products, uh, all the way down to a, I believe, a, uh, a Darth Maul saber, where you can connect your controllers to the ends of a <laughs> of a wow. of a pole. I didn't know about that one. Uh, I, I believe they do. Uh, where, and then you can do like Beat Saber <laughs> with that. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. You get a, a, a variety of products that I do recommend you go check out. Uh, in that same vein, VR Cover, also one of our sponsors, they have a variety of products, but they are, for the most part, provide fantastic face cushions for your preferred VR headset. I love them. They are a must-buy, in my opinion, for any VR headset that you have, as they enhance the comfort, I would say, almost 100%. Uh, really, really nice products. And uh, if you get a couple, you can obviously swap them out if you have friends over and uh, need to do that. So I do recommend you check out VR Cover. Also sponsoring this season, VRML, coming in and contributing in to that prize pool. And uh, yeah, shout out to our sponsors. We do appreciate all of their support. And it is now a $10,000 prize pool thanks to those sponsors. And I don't know if Imperial and Kai are listening into our comms, Sky, but right as we finish the ad plug, we get back into the action. Apologies for that brief pause, but here we are in to round number six. Okay, oh, false start. Oh. No, 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 no. Just kidding. <laughs> we uh, got you. Yeah, but it did give us something to talk about because one thing you may have heard there is when we started that round, Imperial said, don't shoot. The reason they said that is because Marsoc has several several different spawns per objective. And if you spawn in and the round resets and then you go, oh, we're, we're, we're resetting and you shoot your gun off in sort of a uh, reflex celebration, you give away your position. Even after a reset, that spawn point is locked in, and so you are guaranteed to spawn back in the same location. As you see, Imperial here comes back in as we start back up for the round. And so a, maybe something you wouldn't think about, but it happens from time to time, and sometimes teams end up giving away their spawn location, which can really hurt you uh, when you're starting on Marsoc. It can allow the, off the defense to become an offense. Oh, wait, yeah, watch out for this cross set. They can contest I'm really disappointed that us. none of them went for the knife kill, though. <laughs> they don't want none their, of them, uh... None of them went for the team kills. They don't want the scoreboard It's a one-time you can kill your own team. <laughs> I don't want the negative KD feeds on there. Oh, man. It's worth it. <laughs> I really like this Imperial push. Yeah. There's five man approach, but they're all watching different angles. They're communicating. They have each other's backs. Four Nobody's really watching that. security, but you don't really need to do that that's, that's not even a on person. a map like quarantine this early on. Unfortunately, uh, shots coming out there at what they thought was a person, but was not. And so they've now given away their position off of those shots, or at least one player. Uh, um, 
doesn't seem to be impacting their cross much. Those Imperial are not set up to cover any of this south crossing. All of these angles are instead either focused over onto the east or the west. They're not really watching up the middle or onto that south side. It's late angles, really. It is a Kai. lot more condensed. I believe I saw yeah. two yeah, a lot the more station. condensed. There's no push up. There was. There's not really any aggression. Um, I gotta wonder though. Is once they realize that the entire team is in the same little box, will somebody like R. Semper maybe push out wide and go for a flank? Or will they continue to hold this position that's kind of useless right now? Of course, they don't know it. They won't know it until the fight happens and they right. realize, oh, the fight's on the other side. <laughs> and as I say that, it looks like our Semper is actually doing a little bit of an aggressive swing. So we'll have to keep an eye on that while we also watch the approach from Imperial. You know, if they do it fast enough, they could have some kind of line up through the center. And they could catch a a push up to that two store that uh, that middle two story, but I don't know if Semper's gonna work fast enough. And yeah, they are really working themselves away from that side. What's interesting is I was uh, looking at Dazzler's angle. They do have vision into the south, and I did hear them call out one or two across the gas station a bit ago. So the information that there is a potential threat here on the west is in Kai's mind and you can see Etch is set up into a again a late position but certainly one that I, I don't know how many players are really going to be ready for you know in that corner yeah the trick in this game is finding positions that watch the same angles but are still unusual to be in mm -hmm. so that way you can Again, catch the powerful spots without being obvious about it, where everybody else likes to sit. <laughs> uh, seeing some funny comments in chat. They want to see you in motion, Sky. We'll have to work on getting you on camera one of these in days. Motion. Yeah, instead oh, of just of course, your picture. Of course. <laughs> Anyway, back to it. Etch right here waiting for Tippic to cross out, and they could have gone for the knife. Tippic didn't even bother <laughs> to look into the corner. Etch could have knifed that and stayed silent in the corner, but they get the kill. And now Dazzler's position identified. Lol actually catches one over the top at objective location as Dazzler gets completely suppressed from Nope Not Mikey and is likely concerned about Lol, who's firing down onto the defense up from this roof. And look at this. We have to keep an eye on the far rotation here from Semper. They are way off of objective, but they are looking to catch the headshot. No, they don't take There's the shots on onto their the roof. Top yet. roof of impact building. That's not he one of us. He gets the right? call out though, but he's completely missed SCS. There's one, you know, the blue container. Who's oh, actually gone there. behind? Oh no, engage in the back. Six. East side of uh, north roof. Center cross. That a big pick again. If that engage wasn't there, that was an open objective. Semper's position is still so interesting as they do take shots there up onto that roof. Nope, not Mikey and Phantom are pushing up to objective. Dazzler, uh, here's the comms from Nope and seems to be maybe a little bit aware that someone could be behind them as they start to check a few different angles. Engage actually finds oh. Lol up on red, the far red. roof. And Kai have four alive on defense Can still as Imperial tries to work in nope is actually interestingly in between this defense what kind of route is there available here could nope do some damage here almost a 30 second mark yes nope. but he made out a call out and dazzler's gonna peek it if he hadn't made that call yeah. out there was a path there because engage was focused on the other side phantom gets that but 20 that seconds left phantom. They have to push forward. That's sit and wait here, but goes down five seconds. Yep. Kai tucks in. Yep. Yep. The 
a smart move to do as the clock ticks down. Hi, taking the fourth point and map number two along with it. Wow. A solid back close. and forth. Yeah, a good game here this afternoon. It's what you really do expect out of the Challenger Cup. These teams battling for it all and uh wow impressive to see uh the back and forth so early but regardless kai managed to come out on top and remain undefeated as they lock in their second map win we'll cut to a brief intermission but we'll be right back with round number three it shouldn't be long we also will have more games live over on onward underscore vrml2 if you do want to keep track of all of the action. We appreciate all of you tuning in here this fine afternoon. Don't go anywhere. More Group A in just a few minutes.
Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for patiently waiting for us to get into round number three of the group stage. My name's Nightfire. I'm here with Sky Joker. Sky, we got ourselves an interesting one this afternoon. Oh, yes. Just as interesting as the rest, but gonna be yep. great. Silent Purge versus Animal House duking it out on Bazaar, which interestingly enough is both teams best map this season silent purge coming in with a six out of four win streak or they played it six times won it four times yeah. and then animal house playing it eight times and winning it eight times so it's gonna be gonna be a good one to come and catch <laughs> Maybe our closest one yet. <laughs> I mean, hey, we've had a good one just the other, just uh, recently with Kai uh, going up against uh, Imperial, and yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, this group stage I've been it's looking be forward a big to. Of a nail biter. <laughs> yeah, this whole group stage I've been looking forward to, uh, uh, you know, all season really, but especially as we got closer to it, you know, recognizing what teams would be participating, it's just. It's got me very excited, and both of these teams are very strong teams. Teams that can compete against the top seven any given day. You know, it, it, they, they really are yep. uh, both filled with players that have been around for a while uh, in the league and really do have a lot of experience playing competitively, which really does help a lot. Um, you know, both of these teams also, it, it, and and you know what's really exciting is is that. Am I am I right on this? I, I don't know if I actually. Am. These teams don't normally face off again. No, because Animal House being NA, Silent right. Purge being EU, so it's gonna be cool to see the two. You know, both of these teams again having this as their top map yeah, it's but coming in with different play styles from different regions it's gonna be good to see them duke it out and really a great na versus eu kind of toss-up to see which comes out such a fun sort of microcosm of a look into what we're expecting the rest of this month each weekend gonna be packed with onward action that you're not going to want to miss and we're not gonna wanna miss any action right here as we dive into it for round number one on map three of this group stage. Both teams undefeated so far. What did they say? And like you said, I'm really trying to make that they're sure now work. going on their strongest <laughs> map. And we'll see what kind of strats we like get. This month, sometime? The show? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, out Shots the gates. Shots coming out by Mobstar. Oh, oh. Minus one. wow, Poco finding Matt outdoors as well into a 4v4 within, what, 22-ish seconds? <laughs> Wasted no time into this thing as the aggression comes out on both sides. Animal House now set up with Green Theft on this lane, looking for Hoochie. Can't quite catch him. Hoochie oh. able to get the elbows of green theft and that opens up the option for silent purge to push in you can see malno already yeah, just on the outside on blue rim focus trying to apply pressure with utility they have to be careful about overextending because hoochie's oh, still up over nice. the top holding this outside lane and so it is going to come down to animal house just being patient One, and allowing silent corner. purge to push into them as you see don and sri lankan already working up onto the south side of the objective as hex tries to get rid of them they find sri lankan over in the south, but there's more here. Again, Don is already across the street and inside a very dangerous threat to the objective. Lipinski has called him out, but Don's gonna go for an aggressive swing in the trade with Lipinski coming out on top. Still resible, Quoka easily gonna be able to pick that up. And now Animal House has turned what was a numbers disadvantage into a numbers advantage. The three to two, Hoochie and Malno gonna have to do some work here in the next four no, minutes, nine, and they nine. do. Quoka making a rotation back out to his previous position, gonna get punished for that. Into a two to two, four minutes again on the clock. 
watching two teams that enjoy and thrive on aggression. <laughs> and they are battling it out here early as we are in now to our on the four minute mark. It's only two minutes of time played and we're down into a 2-2. Two -two. Ultimately though, Animal House do have a proper setup. Pinsky watching objective Hex also has an eye on from a different angle. Uh, it's going to come down to how Silent Purge approach. Uh, but as Wicked Hex does rotate, it opens up a little bit of gap in coverage there. Just Lipinski on objective as Hoochie and Malno continue to set up. I wonder how far Hex will rotate around. Oh, no. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure Lipinski called out Wicked as an enemy over oh. the comms and then <laughs> killed him oh man well, wicked i guess didn't realize he was the one being called out he rotated to the position where he thought lipinski was calling out an enemy but it was him it, you know, that's a communication key there and all it would have taken is you know a, a word to the team that uh, they're rotating into that position and well, now up to lipinski in a 1v2 Smokes come out, utility from Hoochie there, and matter of time. Who is Lipinski? Here's Malno push from one side. They know Hoochie can push it from another. They try to detonate the C4. That doesn't quite work out. And Silent Purge take their Marsaw crown and a lead 1 0 on Bazaar. That was anybody's round. Yeah. We saw an early pick from Silent Purge, but then we saw an early pick from Animal House. And then we saw a kill on the outside from Wicked Hex. And then we saw the trade in the middle. I mean, it was just back and forth, back and forth. Could have gone any direction. The unfortunate team kill giving Silent Purge the upper hand right at the end there. And a great oh, pinch maneuver. Gosh. They were on time. Sir Lipinski is uh, kicking themselves now. <laughs> oh, they yeah, they right team about killed now. There. Oh gosh, that one hurts. The pressure is on though, you know, and like uh, like we've been talking about, there's something to be competing for here. You know, this is your chance at getting into that round robin for a chance at the $10,000 prize pool split amongst our top three teams, but still a nice chunk of change and some good products from our sponsors uh, that is worth competing for, especially today. You know, we... we talk about it throughout the course of the regular season obviously because the top seven teams get that buy into the round robin but this is an opportunity for anybody uh, yeah, to, buy, to get their chance at this prize pool regardless of how you performed over the regular season and uh well these two teams have performed pretty good over the regular season and so they are wanting to make that all worth it and this is the time as we get back into it round number two on map three very fast push out from this northern spawn they're gonna make every effort to get to that souvenir shop as quickly as possible and gain control they wow. are nearly on objective at this point. Boca pushing out fast didn't have his gun quite ready for hoochie Minus but a one. great refrag from green theft and now he is challenging the courtyard down the center Don, wonder and the if whole team is here. Going to be ready for this kind of aggression. Don and Malno are here, but I don't know if the Don have come in because Don wants to stay silent on their defensive corner. Now would be the time to communicate what's happening. A good bit of counter utility comes in oh. as Mad Outdoors shut down his green theft, trying to push in from the east. Don putting out good suppressive fire, and there's a Ooh. trade between Mobstar and Don. Lipinski and Hex are the final two up through the center as the rest of the defense from Silent Purge come crashing back to the objective. Mad Outdoors pumps rounds through the smoke. Nearly team kills, and there's a quick frag. Sri Lankan looks for the frag over the top, can't find it. Hex finds a double, nearly gets tagged as Malno applies the pressure out. Doesn't find the kills, gets up top, tries to go for the drop down shot. No, they don't. They wait as we're into a holding oh, pattern here. Man. 1v2. If they, if they go for the drop down, they could have found a double. Lipinski not ready for somebody to pop in through that doorway. Wow, that was fast. The back and forth, Lipinski and Wicked with the nice angles. 
Green Thrift getting shut down from the back, not quite checking everywhere and clearing, and then Malno finally goes for that drop down, but Lipinski was watching it then. What a round. It, that, the only way that that play works too, Sky, I don't know if you really saw it, but a smoke that is placed just on the corner of Red Truck, and it denies vision from the refrigerator out up through the center, and so that entire team could push up through Center Bazaar undetected because that smoke was denying the vision. So that entire squad just full sprinted the ice cream truck and was instantly at Souvenir's shop and fighting the defense out the gate. On top of that, the play to invest one over to the east, a smart choice because it does ultimately keep the defense spread and prevents them from collapsing onto the objective and ultimately shutting down that uh, that objective push it keeps the action across the map and that's an important distraction to throw into a solid deep team like silent purge who is capable of rallying quickly off of good comms but uh wow what chaos there as animal house yeah that was a so that was a 30 second push on that objective Wasted no time. Animal House, well known for their aggression, especially with picking up Quoka. Also much known for his early pushes onto the objective. I don't know. To go to our new compliment. OBJ for round three. As we get into uh, the action here and what could be another quick play, a Silent Purge decided they'll have the option of smoking this street and crossing right away. And it seems that they are pushing up to the street early and utility is coming out here. A hearty amount of it at that to deny vision on this street. They're going to be applying the pressure quickly as Mad Outdoors tries to push up the quick trade back and forth. One on the corner of the smoke, one through the smoke. Malno finds another kill over the top. Silent Purge starts things nicely. Four the three advantage as Don is already on objective. What a similar push coming in from Silent Purge wow. just on a different OBJ. Lipinski is alone on this objective. Where is the rest of his team? Mobstar's there, Wicked Hex is on the backside, but do they have an angle to cover the top? That's the question they do. They don't find the shots though. A vital element of the defense gone. Lipinski catches Malno trying to work their way into the corner for a cap. Two more are coming. A C4, oh. a C4 detonates and catches two. The rotation on the backside from Mobstar is shut down. And we're into a 1v2 in the first minute. Hoochie's flying in, doesn't catch Lipinski on that quick rotation in. And Lipinski is going to have to check and find out that they're the only one left alive to defend as they are getting squeezed from both sides. Oh, oh wow. What a wiggle around that column to find Sri Lankan. Just missing the shots. Now down to just Hoochie. Lipinski on a four streak. Will he find the ace? Oh, they to, cross out. To clutch this round. Oh, he doesn't. He didn't see Hoochie crouching over there. Hoochie misses the shot. He says, though. Where? Four minutes on the clock. Hoochie has plenty of time to do something weird. Looks like he's going to. Oh. 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 Man. oh. <laughs> oh, clicks. Lipinski. Oh, the clicks come out. Empty mag there reloads. Lipinski survives another day. 350 on the clock. Hoochie's going to push in. Oh, my wow. goodness. Lipinski with the Let's ace go. for the clutch. What? Wow. What a hold. The dance around the objective. What a bounce back. For Lipinski, man, you talk about yeah. playing under pressure and performing when it, when you need to. I mean, not ruining their last round, but obviously the team kill didn't set them up nicely on defense and then not able to clutch the 1v2, tied things up here. But then they come back the next round and clutch. Next round. F a five kill ace. He he said in 10, I, I know I shot you, Wicked, but I got you the next round. Don't worry. And he performed. Jeez. And that kill spread. It's really Hoochie versus Lipinski <laughs> right now. And the rest of the teams are just, eh, we're the here. They're the supporting ensemble. 
Yeah. <laughs> in this uh, in this the story. The leaders. We'll see how long that lasts, though, because truly, I think a good team, you know, you'll see another t one of the others on that squad pop off and, and, and get a few more kills through mm -hmm. Lock in Don Patron. I mean, anyone on anyone, yeah, you, you can know, count they, any of these they're guys all, out. all capable of clutching in moments like that. And that's really what makes a good team at the top 10, I think. You know, Animal House and Silent That's Perch, why they're here. Yeah, both squads that have been right there, I think, you know, in that eighth, ninth, tenth position this season. And, uh, you know, you're seeing just very good <laughs> gameplay, but also, you know, clutch moments under pressure coming out here, which is exactly why you tune into the Challenger Cup, baby, as we get back to it for round number four. 96, 26. 26, 20, 6, 2, 7. 96, 20, 6, 2, 7. Okay. Did you get that code? I did not. Watch going up that side. They're going to see you from blue room. You're going to be able to memorize that stuff easily. And <laughs> hear the team on Animal House memorizing the code. An indicator that they are looking for the cap and flying to play this aggressively. But it's too late to push out on that cross. And especially with how quickly they've been playing Silent Purge set up and ready for it as Don was on the hunt up through the middle. That smoke was literally just like two seconds too late. Otherwise, Don wouldn't have seen that rotation. Oh, look at this. Wow, some perfect smokes. Quota coming in under the audio cover from the smoke and a nice trade. Smoke also forcing Hoochie to rotate around and Lipinski manages to catch that up. Sri Lankan just covered in audio right now from all the smoke. Matt outdoors in a uh, occasionally used position. I don't know if they're going to check that. Yeah, it's a, not a bad spot because I believe Matt could have heard Mobstar throw that smoke. And so they are somewhat aware of the threat from this side, but they can also obviously catch Wicked Hex pushing up to objective. And so it, it is a nice defensive position. The trouble, of course, is it's vulnerability to nades. If you just put a nade in that in the front of that door, you don't even have to get it inside. Is clear. Uh, you can kill Matt outdoors there. Wicked just eagerly waiting for Sri Lankan to peek a little too much. They have to know Sri Lankan is there for sure. Oh, Mobstar is also looking for that angle as well. I find it? No. Oh. No. X does though. <laughs> yep, Wicked X finds Sri Lankan trying to get away from Mobstar's bullets. Now down to just Matt Outdoors, who's essentially trapped here. Oh, they catch Mobstar. They're find Mobstar, but an instant refract from Lipinski. A great pinch and on time. Animal House find the third point. Yeah, I think you even heard it there from uh, the team of Animal House. Great pinch, and yeah, it was nicely timed uh, to have that work out, and that's what it takes. Go to coordination, being synced up, all you know, knowing your pace beforehand and sticking to it is key. That's what they did there on the attack, a two-minute round. Uh, again, we are flying through these rounds as both of these teams are playing very aggressive here on Bazaar, but still... Uh, they are close. Silent Purge finding more kills there. Is, uh, like I said, Dawn uh, coming alive. And you can see Wicked Hex and Quoka also picking up some kills for Animal House. Uh, I have to see how Silent Purge attack. We do change objective positions. And I don't know. This OBJ is kind of a toss-up. Now this one coming out in the far west. Ugh. It's, it's tough to say because there's a lot of ground to cover in order to get to it, yeah. especially spawning in the far southeast. It just depends on both of these teams are grabbing really early angles. So it's really going to come down to which team grabs the earliest and which team holds the earliest with their aim. Because that's what they're going to be going for here. I suspect a lot of crossfire between oh probably the citizen sign towards the hotel is probably going to be a hot zone early on yeah or even towards the last objectives building 
that window is a common peak point. I wonder, though, you know, if the pacing is going to stay the same here. Uh, if Animal House maybe are going to get a little aggressive because they have this 3-1. You can see Hoochie is watching that approach to Kayat just in case Green Theft does go for that. But Green Theft only... Oh, well, they do push up pretty far. They are looking for an early shot up through the center of Bazaar. I don't know if they'll spot anything out that doorway because the other duo now rotating over to the north side. Don Patron and that two could be running into a, a bit of an issue soon enough as they do have good coverage on this side from Animal House. Mobstar watching down. Wicked Hex also can peek out down this north side. Animal House has contrastingly oh, gone for a little corner. bit more conservative route. I think they're feeling like they need to hold this a little bit stronger, knowing that the map is in their hands if they take this. Green Theft being the most pushed out position. They're going to play it a little bit safer. Both teams are, though. Silent Purge, definitely a change in pace on their attack as well. As we're, you know... Because they know if they lose this round, <laughs> yeah. it's over. Yeah. Absolutely. And you want to get a little bit more being a bit more calculated. They've kind of poked each other. They felt each other up a bit. <laughs> but now we're, we're ticking down to the final moments, and they know they need wins. Just got to keep our attention split across a bunch of different lines of sight here as it is a ultimately a spread push and a spread defense there's two in north kayak yeah, that's gonna be tough especially if the timing's on point it's gonna be a lot happening in a lot of places Gucci might find first contact though as he's a little bit disjointed he's looking for wicked when he finds him Wow, what a dark corner to be in and a great peak. Mobstar sees Mount L on the corner there. They'll get a quick Ooh. frag. Minus one north. That's gonna even the odds. Of firefight up through the center there as Green Theft and Mobstar connect. Gucci dishing out a smoke. And a flash comes in to deny Ooh. Matt Outdoors. Quoka quickly finds Gucci. They're gonna dish some utility out in this relock and they're actually gonna catch Relockin's ankles. Ooh. Green Theft had a little bit of a shootout with Matt Outdoors, flashed him, and then rotated back. He's now waiting for Don Patron to come around through this window. Definitely hears the footsteps. Into a 4v2, Don and Matt Outdoors really need to sync up here. Oh, Green goes for a wide push around. And it's one. Don not aware that Green was there. Matt Outdoors, I guess, not calling out that potential position. I don't think they knew about it now either. Green just the flew the corner. I think he's here by me, West Courtyard. <sighs> but yeah, it's looking like Animal House. house. Lock this one in Ooh. as Green Theft catches the final kill. They'll right, take the down this, Silent Purge. Holy shit. And lock in a pretty solid win. Four to one on our third map this afternoon. Wow. Yeah. And despite that score line, I mean, it came down to a couple of just minor choices that would have changed this whole game. Absolutely. But that's how it is in the Challenger Cup. Yeah, and really. In the finals in general. It's your last chance, you know? Uh, and some uh, teams, some team seasons have to end. <laughs> that's the way it goes here this afternoon and so animal house still remaining undefeated i don't know again if there's a chance that i think there's a chance that we could have a 4-1 tie with some teams and so i don't think silent Purge are necessarily out but this loss obviously not going to help them and so uh we'll have to see how things go forward here we'll likely be tracking animal house through rounds four and five they continue to uh win their rounds but we have other games we could potentially tune into. So we are going to try and bounce around to another live matchup. Uh, 
If you can just give us a few minutes, we will be right back with more Group A in a few minutes. Welcome back, everybody. We are here with Imperial and OJC jumping in to check out how the OJC squad is doing this afternoon as they go up against Imperial, who is currently winning 3-1. As they go on their attack, they kick it off with a nice kill. That's going to be a quick advantage into Imperial's hands as OJC now have to set up and wait for this push in to their objective side. Lol is looking for an angle onto the corner, but there's Yuri oh, pushed up a bit far forward with the G36, and they'll catch out that kill and ultimately put a stop into Phantom's momentum up to the center. Interesting to watch OJC duke it out with Imperial. OJC in it of itself not being necessarily a new team, but definitely a redistributed roster over the seasons. Shots. As we duke it out over yeah. in the east. Oh. A good key trade. pickup, a trade, but a good pickup gonna allow Imperial a little bit of movement as they get the revive and yeah, gonna open up a nice three. cross for them to get possibly behind CK Japan. Yeah, Tippik just comes flying out, and Shinzo is going to find Ooh. that kill over the shoulder of CK. That's going to be a helpful pickup. Yuri's still pushed up. That's going to be a trade Ooh. on them, and it's going to leave Imperial down to two. Nope, not Mikey and Sagmeyer, who Wonderful. has finally come into play there on that south side as their rotation nets them a kill. Shinzo now going on the hunt for Sagmeyer, going to open up that objective if nope not mikey decides to get aggressive Ooh, oh what a, a quick flick right onto segmeyer gonna bring this to a 1v1 four minutes just ticked by into what could be the final round if nope not mikey manages to come out on top here he's got the bullets for it with the m249 Yeah, the question is, is what's this approach going to look like? How is Shinzu going to hold as well? You know, when you're that last defender, it doesn't feel safe to stay tucked in. You know, you have to really check a lot of different angles. With this objective, though, without any smoke, Shinzu really could tuck into a specific spot and just cover all of the corners of that tank, uh, preventing that cap attempt. But even, I think, yeah, you can't cap on... Maybe you can cap on the corner there. And it... So you can cap from right about here if you crawl up to it. Mm -hmm. And that would just be under his yeah. view due to that wooden bench. Yep. Or wooden little, like, kiosk thing. So it's going to be tough. 
And unfortunately, if Shinzu does hold that position, he can get shot from the right side because of the half wall not giving him full cover. So it's going to be tough for him to pick a position. He's picked this one, which is strange because it is not covering the objective nearly at all. He's covering one cross. If it is the... I guess he can look sideways, but there's a whole central opportunity to come in from the... was that the northwest side of the tank? It's a complete blind spot. Yeah, I don't know if Mikey's looking for a cap at this stage. Like we said, though, caps are important, but... I'm thinking they're gonna wanna... Look for that kill. As you see Mikey now checking the tablet, getting an idea of the time. A minute 30 left. And the fact that they are the last one alive. They now are working their way in from the east. I wonder if they have an accurate kill count, as those are a couple of good smokes onto the objective. There was at least one trade, so I don't think there's a kill count. Oh, but Mikey is going to push the one angle that's being covered well. Oh, and they find the Ooh. shots through the hole. Nope, not Mikey. A very Locks common in. position from Shinsu. Yeah, true. You think it might have even been pre-fired? <laughs> Yeah, it was it was definitely that line you could tell the laser was just waiting to zone in on that little spot. Yeah. Seems like we've had some fast bazaars as you can take a look at the round three bracket beneath us here. See a bunch of the outcomes of these games already getting locked in. That means we have only a few to dump into, and so we will try our best to pop into another game. But for now, we go back to a brief intermission, and when we come back, either round four or more bizarre, so don't go anywhere. Out for that quick push, guys. We are back into the action, this time with the newbies and Alchemist still on Bazaar, but potentially down to the last round, unless the newbies can hold on here. Alchemists are looking to lock in map three. Sounds like we got a lot of aggressive plays, judging by some early comms. Alchemists talking about people pushing out early so make sure you hold some lines we also got some pretty aggressive players up on the rosters so it's going to be a good one i think to tune into possibly the last round yeah. if alchemists take this we'll have to see if we're uh 
you know, impacting the outcomes here by tuning into these games. Maybe we're just catching <laughs> final rounds. <laughs> we'll have to see, though, because, again, it has been a bit of a back and forth here. And interesting pace as the Alchemists are slowly working their way up through this bizarre side, waiting for their East rotation to likely come into uh, their get into their positions before they try and push up any further towards this objective space. Mr. Trip is set up on this stairwell, looking and hunting up through that center bazaar. They're not going to find anything, though, again, because and just Alchemist isn't pushing up through the bazaar. They're using Kayot and Ninja Salad is way over on the outside uh, as they try and push up onto that street. Smoke's coming in from the east now as they uh, try and remove Fab's cover, uh, line there through the hole in the wall. Alchemist playing this a lot slower than what we've been seeing from some previous rounds, but they're doing a great job at making sure they're clearing all the angles while I also this this encircling this objective. Ninja Salad One with a great the take on the Mr. Trip who goes for a peek, but tricky, unfortunate, the team kill as he peeks over not identifying that that was a friendly gun. Yeah, it's again, the pressure is on. An instant refrag. <laughs> the pressure is on, and sometimes processing all of the different things you have to process before you take your shots can become hard, as we do see there a team kill coming. We've seen a couple of team kills, though, as even the top teams have been putting them yep. out today. So, uh no knock on that. It happens again when the pressure is on. Laughing Coffin's going to push out here. And Jason able to catch Ooh. the kill. Tricky hears those it's shots. The north, and the there's the comms corner. from Coffin. Jason will confirm that, but Tricky dialed in. That'll be a nice pickup there. Jason goes down. Newbies down to three. Alchemist down to three. A little bit of a, leak, a lack of coverage as Mr. Shrimp really is the only one with eyes on to the objective right now. Uh, Fabs is trying to push back to it. They almost go down in the cross, but now the rest of the team here Jay reinforces, and everybody is ready for a potential push onto the objective. Nick Glock's moving back into this corner, but could still get capped on. Just got to worry about Mr. Shrimp here. Tricky slowly Mine's looks for the picks, objective. finds Fabs making a lot of movement. As you really don't need to be moving around that much. Once you lock in a position in this courtyard for this objective, you can really sit and wait. And unfortunately, Fabs with the rotation is going to get himself down and out. Now allows Mech to come in from the rear. Mr. Shrimp's foot just barely around the corner. Not sure if Mech will catch on to that. Yeah. I mean, it's literally just the toes. I don't know if they can. Yeah, they could push up far enough to get the kill. The Royal's oh, actually going to be the one wow. that finds the pickup. And now it is all up to McGlock's alone on objective. And Tricky is going to pick up that Let's final kill. Alchemist. Lock in the W, kill, right? and they go up 4-2, locking in their W here this afternoon. Scores aren't going to be completely accurate here, um, but you get the idea. As, well, we wrap up map three. Map number four up next. We'll be cutting again to a brief intermission, and when we come back, it will be time for more of Group A. We'll be following the undefeated teams. Don't go anywhere. More VRML action in a few months.
Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for patiently waiting for us to get back into the action. We had to wait for that round to wrap up over on Onward VRML2. But we are back to it here, staying on board of the Animal House squad as they continue to remain undefeated. We now tune in to No Fun Intended, going up against Animal House, who is the home team in this series. So Animal House will be starting on defense, and our map for map number four of this evening is going to be Subway. So Sky, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on this matchup here today on Subway between these two squads? So quick glimpse at the stats here. We got NFI only having played this map once in the season. They did take it, so technically 100% win rate. Animal House having played it a few more times. I believe it was eight times, only winning it three for what I believe was a 38% chance. So it, it, honestly, with stats like that, it's anybody's match. You can't really tell with those numbers. Yeah. Both teams, good teams. Animal House's play style, though, I'm not sure how well a map like Subway is going to complement it. Yeah, the... Maybe hyper aggression isn't the right word, but the focus on aggression from the likes of Animal House is certainly something that... It, it, it does depend, right? Subway can be a map that can give... Marsock certain spawns, depending on what objective you get, they can attack pretty quick. You can run into action within the first 30 seconds on a couple of different objectives. Uh, this one is one of them, where you could run uh, into gunshots right away if they do get that south spawn and come flying up. So, I still do think there is options for that quick play style that Animal House have been deploying so far today, but I wonder if No Fun Intended has uh, had any breaks in time where they could then watch animal house play and maybe try and analyze their future opponent because uh that can certainly give you a little bit of an insight into the fact that animal house are playing aggressive here this afternoon and are not caught or they're not afraid <laughs> to put out that aggression uh even in you know these, these moments where the pressure is on That's definitely a nice little edge you can sometimes get in this sort of environment where you can yeah. kind of hop on and see, oh, maybe this is my next opponent. How are they faring and what is their generic style? However, you can also assume that out of a team like Animal House, who historically have yeah. been that sort of... Right. Again, as you say, not, not, not really hyper-aggressive, although in some cases they are. <laughs> yeah. They are calculated about it. They yeah. are definitely not just running out there without a plan. Yeah, they know where to look. They know where to put the nades. They know where to put the utility and matter of execution for them on these quick plays. They are gonna get that south spawn. So we will see, at least from NFI, if they're gonna put out any heavy aggression out the gate. We'll see if Lipinski is gonna push up early onto the corner and look for any picks because there could be a firefight right away on this tight corner. Quoke is going to push around here. Game is holding that corner. Nade comes in, and the call-out's there. Four are pushing up from the south as Quoke drops back to hold a bit of a later angle and wait for the commitment from NFI. How are you doing, you mister? This is interesting because Deadshot on, like thought they heard Quokka push into the garbage can the corner, but Quokka's not there. And so Deadshot's trying to actually bait out comms because if they hear a response, it gives them an idea of where that player is. So Quokka is staying quiet. They are not going to give in to the chatter uh, from Deadshot, and they're going to hold their angle. Deadshot could easily walk to their death here if they're not careful. As those shots come out, that's going to be an indicator to Deadshot that they are not at trash can. And so it's a good thing they smoked that corner before trying to push it. A lot of action over there in the south. We also have 04 in the north. But then the action in the south is underway with a trade. Deadshot coming out on top, though. 
especially with, with the, the revive. res. Yeah. Bounces him right back. NFI up to five. Animal House down to four. Lipinski maybe up next in the fighting scenario here as they are ready to go from this stairwell. Deadshot, if they overextend and get a bit too confident pushing down this side, could run into trouble. On the other end of things, to your point, Green Theft is holding this side and Game Reaper and Mad Hatter are slowly working their way up to an eventual firefight with Green Theft. It can be interesting to see how Green Theft tries to fight this at the same time. Wicked gonna have to deal with O4 as his C4 gets disabled and he's now going to flash and push maybe. And now Green Theft also gonna be engaging here. Shoulder peak. O4 comes out on top against Wicked. Green Theft wildly throwing out what? the utility. Manages to get the flashbang and the grenade. And then the trade. It's the wildly thrown utility, but also gonna find Mobstar from the North Alley. Lipinski gonna have to crash on this. What a key kill there for Lipinski as he pops up to find that gonna work what? past the smokes. And down they go. I don't know what was happening there, but they seem to be <laughs> I don't know what they were talking about, but they were they lost focus. They didn't go for the res under the smoke and suddenly it dissipates and they go down. NFI take the round. Go up one nil. So Mobstar was trying to call out that it didn't matter what happened because they used smoke. However, Lipinski clarified that it was only certain colors of smoke that were banned. And that was the conversation that was happening, which kind of threw off Lipinski oh. a bit. <laughs> what the heck? We thought... You see... <laughs> Yeah. We've seen smoke. So, some some weird confusion. <laughs> We've seen smoke <laughs> from sure. Animal House today. They know you could use smokes. Oh. I wasn't sure. I caught the tail end yeah, of it. Yeah, who knows? Whatever. Uh, but it did throw Lipinski off a little bit. Yeah. The key pickup, Green Theft, unfortunately, going down in that trade. Lipinski was in a great spot for the flank. He just was forced out of it a little bit earlier than I think he wanted to be. Wicked going down and then Mobstar getting naded from a great artillery strike from 04 in the North Alley. A really solid attack plan. Animal House was set up, but I think they just couldn't land their shots to finalize their positions. Looks like we are into a bit of a lobby issue here. as we are remaking so do bear with us as we sort out our technical issues uh while we try and sort these out i suppose we can uh give a quick shout out to everybody that has been tuning in here this afternoon it has been a Pretty big crowd stopping by, and so we do appreciate everybody hanging out uh, and tuning in to the action this evening. We're gonna try and get to the bottom of what is going on in this series. Not sure how they're gonna do this, so could be a little bit of time before we get back into it. As I think they're gonna want to get the same objective and all of that, so yeah, we're that last round counts. NFI locked it in, but we are just uh, I guess having some technical issues on the player side of things, and so it's going to be a uh, brief pause. Oh, I see what happened. I didn't notice this guy, but I guess the objective changed location after that last round in a in a bug. And so that is why we had to remake. If uh, anybody out there is wondering what the delay has been here. 
uh, for why that happened, but it looks like we are back to it. We've found the same objective. And we should be... into round two shortly, so please do just again. Bear with us on these tech issues. I don't want to jump around to another game because we do want to stay on board the undefeated teams. Uh, they're really going to determine, you know, who is going to be the ultimate champion of this group stage because after this, we're going to have two undefeated teams, Sky, and only two, and those two I think are going to get matched together. I don't know unless they've already played uh, in the series so far. So I'm not sure what all of the match matchups have been, but uh, there's a chance that we have both of those undefeated teams go up against each other. If that were the case, then we are guaranteed a winner at the end of that round. If it's not the case, then we have two games going where, you know, we could end up into a, some sort of a tie situation. Uh, and so, yeah, it's... We'll, we'll, that well, this is interesting. All I'm seeing is Game Reaper in lobby. Oh, they're doing a reset. Uh, we'll adjust the scoreline after this. Yep. Um, they're swapping sides. Hey, uh, that's on? Yeah. There you go. That. <laughs> For update here. And yes, all things sorted. Thank you for being patient while we get this stuff technically fixed on our end. And that patience pays off as we are getting ready to get back into the action. I think you have to swap the teams now because they're swapping sides. I have to Got fix it. the scores. Ironically, we could have just fixed the score. I yes, <laughs> they wanted. I think they wanted to do it this way. So after this round, it would it would change objective. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, it, you don't see what we're seeing, but it's all good. Uh, everything is ready to go, and we're good to go. We should be diving back into round number two shortly. We do appreciate your patience. And as a reminder, there is other games going on right now over on Onward underscore VRML2. I think I did want to shout out chat, but then I got sidetracked with our tech issues. So here we go. Irvati, Sri Lankan, VR Marksman, uh, Clinto, who else we got here? Fab, Vale, uh, Silent Knights, Haywire Bubble, Cheddar, Seaquick, Willow, a lot of folks tuning in here in chat and hanging out. I really do appreciate you uh, all, again, catching the action here this afternoon. And a reminder that we have Group B tomorrow. Uh, different time, same place. Uh, what is the exact start time? We'll have to look it up. We'll get that info out soon enough. But for now, we get back to it for round number two. On map number four, I'm gonna first these You're two gonna undefeated second. teams duking it out for a chance to become that eighth place. It's not even guaranteed after this guy. They still have to face off against the uh, Group B champion uh, next week. I don't know why I put up round four. I pushed the wrong button. It's round two. As Just Do It is going to push up to the corner and look for an early bit of exchange. They are going to dish out the flash, which puts a pause in this push. And did they throw a C4? They did. Wow, look at where that C4 ended up going. I wonder if that's going to detonate and not end up impacting. I don't know because it's inside that texture. But either way, it is very hidden. It's going to be super hard to identify. I'll have to see if Animal House is ready for it. Where did that C4 end up going? It is like inside, right there. Oh, <laughs> boom! <laughs> yeah, it's like it was like inside that small bit of curve there. And oh, they try and peek, and they find a whole firing squad ready to go. Lipinski, Wicked X, I don't have syringe. dialed in there. Lipinski doesn't have a syringe. They're gonna have to look for it in the smoke and res their teammate. 
they'll be able to do that and quick redirect as we are into a 4v4. Nice little pinch they've got set up here. They don't have any north approach, which is going to greatly affect how they're going to be able to push this objective. Getcha essentially cut off from everything because they're just waiting for him to peek out. Gotta come down to how well Game Reaper can hold his dumpster, which a trade shuts him down, keeping it even three to three. Yeah, dead shot, like you said, is tucked in and trapped, really. They're fortunate that there's, well, I was going to say no utility, but there is a smoke, albeit a bit too far. Not going to deny dead shot any vision. That one will. Oh, wow. He is essentially hot boxed. <laughs> yeah, completely disabled in this corner now. It's going off audio cues, and then I would assume blind fire through the smoke. Yeah, there's really no audio he's going to get out of this. So he's just going to have to wait for the shooting to start and then just pray, pray. And he runs out blind, getting shut down, giving Animal House the numbers advantage now. Wicked Hex out in the open. Oh, Mad Hatter finds Lipinski through the smoke. Mobstar now coming in from the other side. Doesn't clear the far back. 04 shutting him down. Hex tucks in the lone survivor of this push-up. Mad Hatter spots him pushing oh. out. And NFI take their marks on the ground. And go up 2-0 against Animal House. The smoke House. went away right as Wicked yeah. decided to move. <laughs> Man, what timing. Yeah, impressive stuff, uh, like you said, on that uh, initial setup. I, I really like how Animal House tried to attack that. They really had a good approach where they had smokes on both of the entryways. The only other way they could have enhanced that is if they were also pushing in from the north. Um, but, you know, a good effort to pinch in. Mobstar not connecting there really was unfortunate for the for that push up because otherwise that's you know a complete reversal 2-1 and suddenly uh, that final defender is getting pinched and so um, love to see it down to the wire like that on that round uh, but still NFI now up to 2-0 and I'm looking at the uh, KD feed and you know they did we don't really have an accurate kill death feed because we don't have that first round in the books here but you know some kills coming in there for animal house so obviously staying close and uh ooh, an interesting next objective and an interesting quick spawn for nfi oh my god look at this code boys it's so beautiful um triple nine seventy six eighty two it's always a good uh, one to patient. watch we know where they're gonna be another new one or relatively new. I'm gonna come to like Westminster. Yeah, it's because your peanut touched my bum, that's why I would have died. Oh wow. A nice little trade for Quoka. He's gonna come out on top. Still resible, but a dangerous revive to go for. X is gonna push up for it. No one's covering now. A nade comes in. Oh, oh. Nade. Oh, wow. Right as he goes for the revive. Unfortunate. Luckily, he was re still resible around the corner. Very nice nade and to the point, a risky res to go for because of that potential nade. And so we're into that 4v4 now as they could gander at this defensive setup from Animal House. They're covering all their entries. Mobstar down in the south hex here uh and then obviously one watching four on three
Just wonder well, what the it? push will look like no, here from NFI overall. It seems like they are going to put one up through that south stairwell. One of the harder places to come no, in through on this objective. Do you like want to like smoke it? Give them a nudge, before you maybe can see them. get into trigger yeah, the C4. Yeah. I yeah. like south stairs push personally. You have to time oh it just oh right what, with what, oh the God, what was that? <laughs> rest of the attack making noise up there. But once you time it with somebody like Mobstar, who's generally watching it, to be distracted with somebody do, pushing up where <laughs> Lipinski's currently looking. <laughs> if he's focused over there, you can catch him. Uh. I have to see. It's, it's tough. It, yeah, it is a matter of timing. We, uh, we hear a bit of banter between Reaper and Hatter here. Is seems like they botched one of their smokes. There's another bit of utility getting thrown up. That one goes a bit too far. And so they're not really diffusing any potential C4 plays in here, which does get detonated. And so I suppose, if anything, that they have managed to get rid of that C4. Comes into the corner as well. Pretty well. Yeah, a lot of resources getting spent here for uh, Game Reaper and Mad Hatter to be really nowhere close to that corner. Oh, baited the shots from Wicked. Just do it. Just kind of throw it around. Now confirming Wicked is there. Lipinski going no. for the assist, not quite finding the shots. Now Green Theft about to have to fight his own battle. This is an indicator of a good push, but it's coming in on both sides, and the defense is split in their attention. The only other thing they need is the push up from the south on the Mobstar. It's actually moved positions, too. And I don't think this dude's going to be ready for that. An 0-4. Now peeking around, looking for the head of the Mobstar, right at the Mobstar's key. He's not going to find it. 4 finds the shots, and Lipinski goes down at the same time. Going to force the split the attention. The street, the street. Ooh, do it catches Just Wicked it Hex out. Wicked. It comes down to a lone defender in Green Theft Auto, and they are literally getting pushed from all sides. Absolutely overwhelmed by NFI on the attack. Animal yeah, House sure. are having a tough go on Subway here as a commanding lead gets taken from this NFI squad. And you know, we haven't talked much about it, Sky, but no fun intended is certainly a team that has been playing well this season as well. You know, they have put out some good games and climbed that ladder uh, up to a pretty respectable position, and so it's not surprising to see them put up a good contest here against Animal House. Oh, definitely not. No fun intended while being relatively new team is not consistent of new players. Hmm. You've got players like Game Reaper, Deadshot, Just Do It, all having been around for a little while. Yeah. I believe the other three um, are the newer members to the league, Mad Hatter, 404. Or not 404, no. I keep saying that. I know. <laughs> uh, 04. Uh -huh, uh -huh. 04 actually being a veteran player from season six. So Mad Hatter is actually the newbie. Fire coming in there from dead shot onto the corner. Smoke comes out, and that's going to be an indicator for Animal House that they are not going to push just yet. The trouble, of course, now is that they have been identified on their spawn. And you can see Mad Hatter is set up for a very early fight. They're going to find one kill. They can't get the full confirm, though. They're going to put out some nades. That could do some damage to more. No, it goes too far. Impressive fire from yeah. both teams. And now it's smoke 
perfectly placed on those that. stairs. No. Ooh, another nade coming in. No, this one another smoke. That one a bit too far, though. Yep. Got to have to be really careful on the timing of that smoke. And I the got train one. comes out on the other side. Foca gets that confirm. Gonna have to deal with just do it now. I mean, well, on the other side, Mad, Mad Hatter, Hatter. <laughs> still waiting as we just bounce back and forth between these Ooh. two entry points. No south push coming in. Ooh, pushes a bit too far. C4 detonates. Catches them out. Another C4 detonates. Lipinski survives just barely. Wow, and just do it. Challenging Hex on the corner. Animal House are down to Lipinski. We've seen clutch rounds before, but this is no easy task as they're into the 1v3. All the ace. Will the bear powers prevail? Game Reaper in a solid position behind the uplink to watch this. Gonna be the tough one to deal with. Oh, Lipinski's gonna bait him. Smoke and probably gonna rotate. No, he's gonna keep pushing this angle. Very risky. Oh, he's definitely blind. This is gonna be a risky cross between the two smokes. But he does manage to get through. You see these lasers crossing, but they don't see each other. Oh, Lipinski might hold here. If he holds here, Smoke's gonna go away. Game Reaper now. will not expect somebody. Yep. Oh, but he's looking. Wow. Oh, but he finds the head. He's gonna wait for There's rotation, two. finds another. And he can just continue to sit and wait. O4 is now gonna look. That's all the time in the world. 220 left on the yeah, clock. Yeah, all the time. And O4 doesn't have a good kill count because he's checking multiple angles. See a question there in chat when they're laying down or they're laying down in real life. Yes, Lipinski is prone in real life <laughs> when they are moving across the ground like that. They are shooting their gun on the ground <laughs> prone with their arms in front of them. It's a... Uh... It's a sight to behold, to say the least, but yes, everything they do, crouching, all of the interactions, aiming, nades, it's all virtual reality. That's the beauty of a game like Onward. And you could just tell he's on his tippy toes trying to get as much view over this as he can. Again, as you said, IRL body positioning coming into play here. As he goes from all the way low to the ground to all the way high as he can go. To try and get every advantage he can. O4 is playing this patiently though and it's the smart play to, to do here because O4 can wait. They don't have to check this corner although they are oh, getting so close. Uh -huh. They're just not checking that deep corner which is smart because they don't have to. They just don't need, to, need to. Yeah, they just need yeah. to prevent the initial, really just the cross past the gate, because they have to go through the gate to get the cap. You can't cap on the other side of that gate. You, ha you, you can on the left side, actually. You can actually cap on this, on Lipinski's side. But he has, he will be seen by yeah. O4, granted. But he can cap on that side. Oh, he's going in real low. O4 just narrowly missing it. Do you think there's a route here? Let's oh. get come down to the wire. 
10 seconds. Yeah, it is. Oh, is that a flash? What a flash yeah, timing. Yeah, too high. It blinds Lipinski. Oh. 04 saves the flash for five seconds and then uses it wow. when it matters most and blinds them for those five seconds. They peek for the kill and plain and simple NFI just play a clean four rounds of Subway to lock themselves in with a W. Wow. That's that. I, that <laughs> is that. A, uh, Animal House Way does not quite bring them in no. on a map like Subway. No. Again, there is still this potential for where we could get down to a 4-1 split. And so rounds one and all of that will matter uh, if that is the case. We could also have a situation where we have for our final round on downfall, both teams undefeated going up against each other. So it's all a matter of waiting and seeing who ends up winning the other undefeated match, which is live over on VRML2. We will try and pop into some other games that are also being played by other teams uh, so we can keep the action going here. But uh, do hang out and don't go anywhere because, again, we'll be right back with more of the Challenger Cup Group A.
Welcome back, everybody. We are here in our final round of the Challenger Cup Group A. It's been a long road, Sky, but, well, we are now at the two last undefeated teams in what has been a pretty grueling uh, back and forth, you know, across a slew of different maps, a real variety in terms of how you can play and how in different styles. And we now go for our final map of this series to downfall. I mean, what are, give me all your thoughts on these teams, on this matchup. It's, uh, this is gonna be crazy. Oh man, so much to go over, so little time. <laughs> but I do know that downfall is one of the OAs M most favorite maps and I believe they do have a resident sniper that we might see get played always an interesting aspect of downfall in particular to see how teams deal with snipers especially on attack yeah and I know no fun intended are also pretty strong on downfall especially Everybody this season big, huh? yeah. and so we get to see what these two teams are going to do against each other in what Man. is probably the most important single map of their season yet. This is for all the marbles of today. The most, the biggest marbles of tomorrow. <laughs> Well, for the chance at the even bigger marbles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot. The finals. There's a lot <laughs> yet ahead. This is just Group A. We get one winner here. The winner of this matchup. The winner of this matchup will go up against the winner of Group B, which is tomorrow at 1 p.m. PST, right here on this channel. You're not gonna want to miss it. When we are getting a sniper battle here between Snobby and who is that deep in the corner That's there? Right. I can't tell. Deadshot is NFI sniper. Ironically, they both have snipers that run the 12X. So it's yeah. going to be a counter sniper battle throughout this whole map. I forgot Deadshot was also a resident marksman. Yeah, yeah it's why. Uh, at least what I saw in chat, uh, the consensus was that NFI were going to take this one. Um, and so we seem to be split, Sky, between our analysis and what the chat is saying, which, uh, well, hey, that's not new, I suppose. But uh, <laughs> it, uh, it happens from time <laughs> to time. And I am curious to see what the predictions will unfold uh, to be, because I hopefully we'll get that up and you can choose who you think is going to be the winner with your channel points. And we'll... We'll, we'll look at that and see what the overall no, consensus is from chat uh, with those channel point investments. But for now, we're into a holding pattern. You it's know, the this sniper, offense it's the sniper, it's not wanting to push up just yet, uh, although they are at trying to cross now and get set up in the south. I made it to lower dumpster. Yeah, the goal here is the stage up. What positions can they grab and then what can they hold? But they need to be doing it at a consistent pace. Downfall being one where many teams tend to run out of time. They cannot afford to get caught up in their positions. After yeah, keep moving you. forward. One They've done a great job at grabbing all of these angles, but yeah. man, they just cannot get the picks that they need. I can't really find anything. They are getting into a few bit of skirmishes here and there, so a little bit of information, but it's really like they just know where Just Do It is. <laughs> they don't really have a good idea of Mad Hatter or any of these other defensive positions because they are very late. They've formed a very tight kill box. And uh, maybe I that's the nature know. of downfall. You have options, right? You can play aggressive. You can look Lower for picks like Just Do It Is, or you can invest in, in holding late angles uh, like you have Mad Hatter here waiting on the stairs for any sort of advance. I'll be just barely ducking under dead shots. Uh, shot as Ghost is battling out with Game Reaper. Upper red truck. One guy in the 
Dent nearly tags Just oh. Do It. Deadshot finds Snobby Rider in the sniper battle. Deadshot comes out on top. So they lose control of the north. They don't have that Overwatch position any longer. But they have sort of gained control of this three-story with the gent up on this top floor, has an angle down into Just Do It. Mad Hatter is still playing the silent game and is actually trying to sneak their way up definitely to catch one, the gent out here. Uh, center hotel. It's been called out, though. I know, but there's another one. Quick one, too. Got refrag on gent. Gotta take a Into look. Into a 3v4. Just under two minutes left. Real squid. Just poking out at crit. Or game reaper. Almost gets sniped. Pushing up the First stairs. Floor, right. A ghost going out. What? Gonna have to deal with 04, though. Oh, huge for oh, 04 to be there. Doesn't check. The smoke was actually perfectly applied to blind Game Reaper from that window. And now Squid is going to try the same thing. And frankly, they can. They just have to get 04. Because again, Game Reaper's vision is blind. They can't as 04 absolutely clutches it for NFI. They just had a huge gap in coverage that was really held down by one person. That's a big risk to take on defense on a map like Downfall. But it does pay off. With NFI having four left alive, they do take their defensive round. Yeah, if they had just nailed the shots onto 04, if Ghost had just checked that window, oh. you must always check that building on that objective. You can, you have to expect people to be in there. And I mean, I don't know if we made it clear enough here, Sky. The winner of this is the winner of this group stage. These are the two remaining undefeated teams. The winner is going to be the only remaining undefeated team out of the entire group stage. And again, they'll be moving on to play against that Group B champion next week at an undecided time. The teams will hash it out. But we will broadcast that action live here on this channel. So you will not want to miss that. Act, that. So if you aren't following to the point, make sure you are following the channel. We also do appreciate those Prime subscriptions if you do want to hit that uh, free Prime sub, or if you do just want to subscribe to the channel, that support goes back to the casting and production team amongst uh, a few other folks that work behind the scenes to help provide you this fantastic production that you see here this afternoon. Uh, we really do appreciate all that support. And uh, back into it we go for round number two. Yeah, man. What the fuck? Oh, yeah, usually, like, early call outs here not to go certain directions definitely aware of the possible early lines that could come up oh, just do it finds one early the gent's gonna be the most forward position has no fun intended take control of the south valley yeah they fly up that south out of their spawn Really applying the aggression I'm I'm early here, and Gent is going to have to deal with a lot of different angles. There's one on the, the sand, there's Game Reaper close, there's Mad Hatter out the window. Uh, just a, the a ton buildings. of different people here pushing up from the south. Interesting how Gent has moved into different one positions to try dressed. and confuse them. However, he's exposing himself a lot narrowly getting missed by 04 and all of this peaking that he's doing is so dangerous up here he really should just stay down and stay alive as staying up there would eat up a lot of time from no fun intended because they'll be forced to clear out his position well it is eating up time he right now down. you know i think nfi want to push up but frankly they can't cross out with the gent here they don't have a lot of freedom to push out into this space. And so they do manage to find another kill over the top. Mad Hatter does connect with one. And Game Reaper is still trying to battle back the likes of Ghost in that bottom sto uh, floor. Moved. But they do miss. He's moved. He's and moved Ghost from, crosses. Uh, it's one enemy. He's moved from the ground floor. Uh, 
Dent took some sniper rounds for Dent shot, but not enough to put him down. Just do it, might have an angle here. Jet finally finds Grim Reaper. Gotta wonder how much ammo Jet has left. One Marsock Tower. Yeah, they are certainly the shooting rockles. a lot of bullets out here. Suppressive fire is good, but uh, to the point, you, ha you have to be somewhat conservative as you do have a limited ammo resource in this game. And ooh, there are the shots coming in, the sniping, the sniping from Deadshot, prone on the ground. They catch Gent, the call comes in, that center hotel's den. FI have the opportunity to push up towards objective in a 2v4. It's all up to Ghost and Snobby holding down the objective. There Are might... they really holding the I objective, know. though? There might be. I was going to say, I think <laughs> there's some, some potential cap opportunities here. Even if Ghost is watching, they could push underneath their nose and cap on the outside corner. It's... it's... There's a clear cross from the helicopter in that there's just no way 04. of catching it. And 04 is doing yeah. just that. There he goes. They're working like he up. hears me from the heavens. They're working up way past the rest of the team. You look at the overhead. They are the tip of the spear here on this assault. And that seemed like you they're taking a, yeah, a quick pause to allow the rest of this team to catch up to them. Just tell me where you want it. But they really have this option to push up to this outside corner gonna pop that oh, smoke that's, that's smoke. gonna give away the potential cross no there's good enough. oh there's another not necessarily uh, ne not necessary though well they, they are don't... talking about a cap over comms yeah and they don't know ghost position so i think that smoke was to deny vision from the window oh four doesn't get past oh. snobby rider who was watching you right those smokes an indicator that a push could be coming in from that side, and Snobby was fortunately holding this angle out. And so maybe this duo will be able to prevent the assault coming in, but it's all a matter of time as Deadshot wraps really far around. I wonder if they'll yeah. be able to find a unique angle here. Mm, I don't think anything that would catch out the current defenders, unless Ghost makes out this rotation. Just do it is up next on the cap attempt. Oh, his dead shot finds oh, Ghost. Wow, he does find it through oh. the back door. Just do it, makes it across. And Snobby doesn't see, and no one's here. No fun intended. Have an absolute free cap with a minute left. Just do it, can punch this in. And Just Snobby missed the cross. NFI go up three to one or three to zero. I excuse just know me. The, the whole VOA team was just intent, just uh, screaming. <laughs> Had to be. Yeah, I, I love to think about it, but I hate to, to put myself in those shoes because I've been there before, and it is it is tough. When, again, when your season is on the line, this is the last chance you have to play. If you lose. You're done. You're only watching for the rest of the weekends. And, uh, it, you know, I guess the reality is, is we've had 29 or 28 teams already face the fact that their season is finished. It is the harsh reality of a season ending. And so it's just how it is. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's not done yet, Sky. BOA is certainly down bad. As they have to go on to the attack, they have to secure this Marsoc round. And NFI, I, they're just in the perfect position to play a very conservative defense, a tight kill box, and force VOA to come to them. But you can't bank on that if you're VOA because they also have freedom and in play, into play aggressive and try and catch you out and unexpected. And so it's really in... Uh, NFI's hands right now as VOA have to rally and lock in this Marsoc W or it is season over.
We're gonna go for some early lines here to try and get a pick. We might have to cross all the free fire. So what is center one mid? Center. So Two do get across. And so those early shots give away the spawn. But they're over in that southeast really gain corner. Yeah, they don't find the kills they were hoping for. They don't deny the defense from setting up where they're set up. And if anything, no fun intended, do have the freedom to play aggressive now because they do know the spawn point. And you can see Game Reaper is pushing up, almost looking for kills. Uh, oh, is they're actually going to tuck in to... Okay. But it was historically dark dumpster building, but it is well lit nowadays. And so they'll tuck in and patiently wait. But dark room, dark this room. is heard. And yeah, VOA calls it out. Dark room. And I wonder if Gent could thread a nade throughout the window into the doorway. I think they could. There it is. Just a flash. Oh, flash. Just to kind of let him know that he's there. Oh, More than anything. Ooh, and they're challenging the corner, and that's a risky challenge to make because they do have those other lines. Deadshot and just do it. Find the kill behind the gent, but the gent does get their successful kill and keeps things even for a piece. They can't find Deadshot. The sniper from NFI lands their headshot. That's going to be a full kill. And Ghost now putting rounds over to Deadshot's corner. <laughs> Deadshot really forced to tuck in and not allowed to peek windows. I cannot confirm him. That's what you have to do when you know there's a sniper. You just have to dump rounds, make sure they can't yeah. peek. Big kills, though. Unfortunately, those rounds don't get dumped fast enough. Not out We're of the woods. We're gonna have to take over Center Hotel. Yeah, they are. They're gonna be ready. Matt Hatter tries to take that headshot. Can't quite get it. Squid takes the re-peek, and Hatter is there and waiting. That's one kill. Hatter goes out for the confirm. Snobby's gonna try and yeah. catch them. As they're confirming, Hatter looks for a second, they can't quite find it. Snobby one, does one. get that one, turns it into a 3v2. They have control now of three-story, and a nice line out over on towards that objective space, over on to uh, Just Do It, where they find that kill through oh, the window. It's 2-2 two, two now. BOA not giving up. Dead shot on that back corner. Definitely a decent rotation that could catch Snobby Rider unexpected, but not before they get 0-4. They actually have bad covers. There's an opening for a cap opportunity, and Deadshot has to prevent it. They have to crash forward and stop anyone from pushing inside the objective building there. That's what they're looking for now, because you can cap inside that building. Yeah, Ghost definitely has cap on his mind if they have a good kill count, as Ghost is a resident capper of violence of action. I don't think it's going to be too easy, and again, it's such a big risk. You can go for the cap when you have... A th you're down 3 0. You really just need a round. Oh. But also, that kind of pressure to you to go for the cap. Yeah. Very true. But oh. Ghost goes for the angle instead, finds one, finds the one point that they needed to stay on the map and stay in the Challenger Cup. Could this be the comeback? Interesting to note, Snobby did not bring the sniper this round. Maybe he felt out sniped and decided that bringing the rifle would be a better use of his abilities. Yeah, could be that. Could be just the nature of the play they wanted to try and execute on. But uh, either way, violence of action, hang in there. And... Like you said, Challenger Cup Group A ain't done quite yet. NFI now go on the attack, and I really do think that a downfall in particular tends to lend itself into the hands of the defense. 
main reason I say that is because it's pretty easy. I say that, you know, <laughs> it's easy to set up a yeah. kill box Figured. around an objective where you can really have a solid, all of your lines essentially create a diamond uh, or a pentagon, I guess, around uh, hexagon. What's the five? Penta? Pentagon. <laughs> uh, around pentagon. around the objective. And if the, any opponent wants to get to it, they have to cross a line of fire. Uh, that is sort of the standard way to defend this Inside objective. And, oh, this is well. interesting. We are going to jump right back into it for our next round as Violence of Action do get the far spawn. They don't spawn near objective. They spawn away from it, which makes it easier to get into the three-story, but does require the smoke that they throw out. And no fun intended, don't have a quick spawn, so they don't really see any of this. And so BOA are set up pretty heavily into the south with a real minimal presence over in the north, but still good coverage of the objective. Going to be up to dead shot to spearhead no fun intended to push. I say that from the rear by getting hit the picks. So that way they can safely move up or at least identifying some positions. But will he be able to do that from the north? I don't think he's really going to be able to see anybody. Unless Gent gets a One little too up. peaky up. up on the roof like he did earlier. He's going to White House. Um, he might be able to find Snob. But as I say, he's that Hatter actually finds that shot. A big kill to kick off the NFI push from the south. I do think Deadshot will eventually late round find Snobby. If Snobby's not careful looking out those windows towards the north. I think that's going to be a key pickup from Deadshot if he doesn't get taken down earlier. That shot does but work. other than that, there's really nowhere else. Yeah. They do work their way up into that three-story. And do have a decent vision down. The palm tree obviously denies a super powerful position there on the corner. But even still, you can sort of look around the edges and through some of it, which you see Deadshot doing now, looking for that super tight angle through the palms into the window. Uh, but hey, no one's there, everyone. Patiently waiting for the push to come in, although we are into a bit of a back and forth here with Squid holding the cross. I don't know why Squid keeps peeking that. He knows he's just going to get shot at. <laughs> really wants to get those shots off. 04. Once again, spearheading the assault here coming up center. But he's got so many really angles to deal me. with. He knows about Squid. Squid's definitely been called out. Snobby is in a common position, so he must assume that Snobby's there. And then Ghost with the cross coverage. Gonna have to find a way to deal with that. Oh, but Squid crosses out in the open. Oh, he goes for a second story. Yeah, the smoke denied them vision on that, on that window. Yep, and this is where things get dangerous. With him peeking all this, does Deadshot peek on him? Yeah. Sniper in the north, still a, def uh, a threat that they really don't even know about. And now Ghost is distracted by Just Do It. Can 04 make this cross while Ghost is distracted? All this timing comes into play. See Deadshot still hunting, <laughs> not finding Squid. Ghost hearing the comms. We can pick him out together. Or He's first floor, first floor, first floor. Oh man. It's just here. under two and a half left. Ghost is essentially surrounded. No longer Minus watching the cross to objective because he's too worried about everything around him. Minus Finds Minus two, Minus though. Minus as they approach one at a time, they are not yeah. working together at the moment. You better be a there. touch out of sync. Oh, but a team kill. A team kill, another frag. It leaves NFI with just one. VOA, hang in there in the chaos and prevent the assault from coming through the double. Wow. 
being a huge play there. That shot almost finding Snobby, but not quite getting the shot just under 90 seconds, all down to the sniper to attempt this cap. Gonna again try and re engage Snobby through the windows. Tower. Ultimate Rival gets his shots onto him. Gonna need to call that out so Snobby knows where not to peek, but instead he's going to peek it. I don't know so if they're risky. aware that he's a sniper. 45 seconds. Clock is ticking. Oh man, he's gonna get close. Yeah, they are. Headshot's gonna get right up to objective, really. Nobby's already <laughs> And Violence of Action take their second point. Again, keeping them in the fight. They are not going down easy. A, uh, <laughs> a battle. Coming in from this VOA squad right now. As we change objective placements, we go to one that can be won, but is very challenging to lock in, I, in my opinion, on Marsoc, just because of the several different very powerful defensive positions that can be taken to deny caps. Uh, and so, especially with how well um, they've been sniping so far, Deadshot could be a key player and holding down this next defensive round for no fun intended. We'll have to see, of course, what uh, the spawn looks like, what VOA try and put out here. And wow, I, I, the thought crosses the mind, Sky, that a cap here obviously locks in oh, your, it locks it in for VOA and takes the, uh, you know, it gets them that group a champion title we've seen the objective cap before uh, yeah. but man this is a tough one i think i remember seeing boss fight cap on it once but that's just it's a tough one <laughs> yeah it really requires peak coordination you know and and a very good uh utility placement you know you really have Smoke to get those so smokes important. right where you need them and out the gate there may be an opportunity for some early kills we'll have to see if voa look for those or if instead are just going to dive down into that east street west street see the gent holding Taxes one on the cross. Oh, and he Can't finds. get two. Uh, Echo four, one other one crossed the lower dumpster. Wow, what a start for Press VOA. A lot of information gained, and they find a kill. Now, can they shut down the sniper that is dead shot? Snobby definitely cross, looking Bungalow. for it. Is Snobby running a sniper, though? He is. So it's going to be sniper on sniper. Oh, no, he's not. I'm sorry. Ooh, a dead shot may catch the cross. No, they drop off just as Snobby I'm crosses the, st the standard the onward way. And now yep. Deadshot is going to rotate and likely go up into that White House where they will have a great bit of vision in a pretty nice uh, concealed spot right down onto the objective. One's on OBJ, uh, dark room OBJ. Oh, wow. Oh, Gent is just waiting for Just Do It to peek out. It's already been called out. I had her find Squid. Echo 4. A 
bit of a firefight here up through the center as beams exchange a little bit of back and forth. Some utility comes out from the likes of VOA, but we're back into a 4v4. That smoke actually pretty Still good. Dark room. Almost I tagged him once on objective. right on top of OBJ, but not really denying vision from just do it. You can see the ghost and gent looking for any sort of angle into that building there. Gent gonna go for the slow crawl, but uh, the the danger here is dead shot. They have yep. not identified the sniper in the back valley yet. And the gent has exposed himself and Snobby even have both exposed themselves quite a bit to that hill without realizing it. Gent tries to flash that flash in. Bang. Yep, now Deadshot's gonna have that covered. Oh, there but there's the kill. Oh! Minus wow. one in Valley, minus one in Valley. Nobby, the sniper with the MK-18, nails Deadshot with a quick refrag. Bringing this to a 3-3, three, three, oh. and minus Ghost Valley. finds Hatter in a twin. crazy, crazy rotation to be doing late game like that. Maybe an inaccurate now kill count. Two, three, two. Who knows? But yeah, really a risk to be taken to go way out in front like that. And it's now down to just do it and 0 4. Are we thinking cap? I don't know if VOA have an accurate kill count or any utility. We've seen smokes come out already onto this location. And I don't know I what's one available. Smoke. Uh, one flashbang. And that's it. One smoke and a flashbang. Oh, and one smoke and one frag. So two smokes, a flashbang, and a frag grenade. So a decent amount of utility. Might be able to string something together with two smokes. Uh, lower dumpster, lower dumpster. One flashbang used against oh. them. Oh, but 04. One on me. Finds rival. On a long cross, still resible, able yeah, to give that call out. Just under two minutes, gonna have to make something happen here. Ooh, that flash, I don't think air gets 04. Oh, it was a great attempt, though, at the air burst. Just do it on a bit of a rotation. Doesn't get caught out by Snobby. Oof. So close, but Snobby will find the back of Mine's 04 not, here in a nice OG, little OBJ. circle. Wow. And the kill comes out. Three, what? three to the trade. The comeback from violence of action to give us the most the most action that we possibly can get. <laughs> wow. It truly is an exciting time to be an Onward fan, that's to say the least. <laughs> this Challenger Cup has that's been awesome, Sky. I mean, we have just seen so many good games and we now are down to the decider of group A. It's the final map, it's 3-3, round seven. Come on, you know, it's, the pressure here is on, the heart's gotta be racing for these teams right now. I, stabilizing aim has to be a tough factor here. Even if you are a sniper, maybe, let's think about this guy, it was, maybe that's a reason why VOA aren't using their sniper. Maybe Snobby just doesn't, their hand they don't got the pro they don't have this the pro tube stock to support their aim and stabilize <laughs> them in game and instead their uh, their nerves are causing a little bit of instability who knows of course i'm just throwing that out there as a bit of a cheeky advertisement really but also still <laughs> segue it is true too in that you do get nervous and it does impact your ability to stabilize your aim and you got to think, you know, we've been sitting here casting and talking and moving our mouse around and pushing some keys. But the entire time we've been doing that, they have been standing up, throwing down. I mean, with the occasional breaks between matches, of course. But again, they've been putting in all the work.
Yeah, it's been a and long. It comes down to this. It's been a long day of onward, that is for sure. And wow, what a crazy way to try and wrap this thing up. It's early shots come in to deny a cross, and Squid instead wow. connects with just do it from a distance. Not even sure if they got the kill. But look at what a terrible spot this duo's in now. Oh, what a key oh, frag. What a I'm massive done, frag done. from 04. Absolutely saves the duo as they were completely trapped in the open. That is a key pickup. Still, though, Resible and 04 won't be able to confirm that because uh, the so it's a window shot. And so BOA should be able to yeah, scoop up that kill, res. So if else These are all call out Squid can give to. Gent's going to go for it. And that's, should yeah, like you said, that should be a free revive. We're making the cross. Yep. Moving. Squid's up, one's at Northeast Bungalow. So close on the cross shots. But now they are switching spots. Gents is actually going to opt to stay here while Squid goes on a rotation. I got to wonder if maybe that's because Squid is wounded. Maybe yeah. Gent is now taking the forward position. Possible yeah, minus one on sure. squids hold up the back. That'll be my guess. Would have been northeast bungalow. This guy. is so risky uh, for Gent to be peeking these squid, windows. Oh bike. my goodness! Oh, and they, they now they realize sniper it. Sniper somewhere up a red. <laughs> oh yeah, they have a sniper. This Looks might like not be a good idea. Gent's gonna He's gonna continue to do it. Crazy. Why? Why challenge the sniper? Man. My house, there might be people rotating to twins from that direction, so watch out. No fun intended, Sometimes net themselves just that. Have a baseball. Yeah, well. The pressure, you know, it's hard to tell what the, oh. what the, what's going on oh. in that, in the mind of the player, because there's so much to process in a competitive well, game like this. Clear. Like onward and so. Hard to always make the oh, right decisions. And... No, no, no. Still, oh, a, uh, clear. Well, it is a non-ideal start, and Deadshot has net an NFI a bit of an advantage with that sniper. There's still a long ways to go here to get up to this objective. As we do see the push and control taken of the trip, uh, triple story, smokes come in, and that's a pretty good smoke. The night vision on one of the windows, but not both. Yeah, it's going to force some pretty panicked movement, though. And I think that's what NFI is going for. They really want the defense to be moving around. Because that's what's going to let them get these picks. Oh, Squid goes out in the open. White House dead. White House dead. Last guy. Oh, man. That's exactly what NFI needed. Yeah. Now two picks down. And Ghost making some peeks. Again, out in the open. DOA is just so now concerned about the cap attempt. They saw the smokes come in, and they just rotated a bit wildly to get into their positions, and now they forfeit all of their advantage on defense and are fully surrounded. 04 behind them, ultimate yeah. rival getting hit from dead shot and the three story. It is not going to be an easy push here, and all NFI have to do is find the kill. Snobby at least shuts down one. Ultimate goes down. It is all up to Snobby in a 1v4. They catch 04. That's a big kill. And it's important to remember that, you know, defending objectives not important right now. It's weird because nope. you really have to shift your mentality. But there is no reason to hold OBJ. Snobby because riders you have should... to stay in the fight. Yeah, Snobby riders should go for kills only. They're the last defender. This is Wait. the last possible round. By being by objective, you There's open yourself up. Out, though to the kills and that is going to be nfi locking in the w shots over the top of that smoke lock in nfi in group a that's it sky there there could be an issue there because no red, red smokes smoke are fine green smokes are green illegal. smoke okay okay Okay, just okay then. And if I take it, indeed they do. Wow. No issues at all in that play, and they absolutely lock in the final song. round. Yeah, that is 
our Group A champion crown. And while that has been a long road for them, it's still not done yet. Like we said, we have Group B tomorrow. That starts at 1 p.m. PST. That'll be live on this channel. And the winner of that will then face off against uh, No Fun Intended here. Uh, they will decide the time uh, and, and place, so to speak, uh, for that game next week. And we'll be sure to broadcast it here on onward underscore vrml on twitch so be sure to tune in to all of the action that is coming up whether that's tomorrow or later this week and then obviously we get into the round robin the true meat and potatoes of the postseason where we get to see who is going to be crowned our one two and three and ultimately take away a chunk of that ten thousand dollars in cash and hardware prize pool that again comes from our sponsors who are HyperX, vr cover VR wear. Uh, wow, ProTube VR, and obviously VRML contributing in to supporting the VR Master League onwards season 12. We really do appreciate those sponsors. And again, I encourage you to check out the HyperX loot drop sale that is live now. You can click the link that is in the information below, the big HyperX uh, tap in link, and that will direct you to the current sale so do check that out but that's gonna be it for us here this afternoon sky any final thoughts on what has been a fantastic group a i need a nap <laughs> <laughs> yeah it oh, was a uh... i just i can't wait to to watch tomorrow i won't be able to participate unfortunately but hopefully in between work duties i'll be able to catch some action and I, I hope it's as good as what we saw here today. Yeah. Yeah. It was... It's going to be. Group B is going to be super exciting. We have some great teams there. Uh, <clears throat> we'll talk more about that tomorrow when we get into what is going to be another long day of Onward action. But for now, that will be it for Onward and Group A today. Both channels offline. And so... I do want to say, finally, appreciate everyone tuning in. But until next time, stay classy.